good. Oh yeah, I read that. Okay. <clears throat> and welcome to the regular meeting of the Timberland Regional School Board for Thursday, March 7th, 2019. Um, this is our regular meeting at 7.30. Um, Mrs. Uh, Belcher, would you call the roll, please? Brian Boyle. Here. Lee Doobie. Here. Kim Farah. Here. Sheila Lowe's. Here. Sarah Mockamer. Here. Sean O'Neill. Here. Kristen Savage. Here. Sue Sherman. Here. Jennifer Silva here. Seated at the board table this evening uh, will be the superintendent of schools. He is running late. And student representative Nick Dalhuli. The presence of other district administrators as well as Timberlane Teacher Association officers will be reflected in the meeting minutes. Thank you. Um, before we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, I wanted to take a moment to offer condolences to the family of Margaret Toomey, um, Beth, Beth and Earl Metzler's um, mother. Um, she passed away a couple weeks ago, so our condolences. And also to take a moment of silence, if we could, for uh, Tom Cullen. Uh, Tom Cullen uh, was the original facilities and uh, groundskeepers here from 1964 till, uh, I think, 1990 when he retired. An amazing man, uh, a D-Day veteran, um, uh, an amazing wealth of historical data that he shared with many, many classes. Um, over at Timberlane. Um, if you had a question about anything on the properties or anything on the campus, Mr. Cullen was the man to, to go to. Um, he was the first, first man I met when I came here to Timberlane. He helped me find the house that we currently live in. Uh, he was a good friend to all, and it's a, it's a loss to Plasto, and it's a loss to Timberlane to say goodbye um, at age 95. Uh, to Tom, um, Tommy uh, Cullen. So I wanted to um, share a moment of silence before we stand for the pledge. Thank you, everybody. Mr. O'Neill, would you like to do the Pledge of Allegiance tonight, please? Yep. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> okay, we've got, I believe, four sets of minutes in our packet. These are the sealed, non-public. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't pass out. I'm sorry. Recall these were ones we had before us before, and we had some questions. And um, Kathy, on our behalf, contacted uh, our legal advice on these, and there were just a few small changes, Kathy, yeah. that you made yes. to the minutes. spelling of one name in this matter to that matter. Yep. Otherwise, he said that they were um, not very good in the format that they were presented. And spelling. Make a motion to approve the minutes as presented, January 16, 2019. Motion from Mr. Boyle. Do I have a second? A second. So I have a second. All those in favor of accepting? Eight. Eight. Opposed? Abstaining. One. Eight zero one. Thank you very much. Those are sealed, so those are coming back. Okay, I'm coming back. Those ones I've got another set. Instead okay. of Chris okay. Crossy. All right. Uh, 
Uh, now we have, um, thank you, these are all back. These? Thank you. Did you have your copy? No. So these are sealed from the 21st of February. We might as well get all these done. Oh. Back in. Still trying to figure out where we are. Do the non-public ones too? These are yeah. non-publics oh, coming around. A sealed set coming to you. Oh. Red on the top. Okay, so this is the set from February 21st. Note the time. It was 10:18. <clears throat> When we finished and went back into public, it was 11.06 p.m. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Motion by Mrs. Lowe's. A second, please. A second. Let's do the seconds. All in favor? Eight. Opposed? Zero. Abstaining? One. Eight, zero, one. Can we have those back, please? On publics, Kathy. Mm -hmm. And now to the uh, draft of the regular board meeting of February 21st. That's in your packet. Motion to accept. I get them on the floor anyway. I make a motion to accept the minutes. Mr. Boyle makes the motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Second from Mr. O'Neill. Questions, concerns, corrections? Mrs. Wells. Um, I'd like to amend them. For the life of me, I can't figure out why this just keeps coming back and back. But um, motion to amend. I've looked back another minutes and I see um, <coughs> the motion passes with changes. And that's what I would like it to say. Instead of amend, you, you, uh, you use the word amend. And I, that's why I, um, I never say amend. I always say changes, corrections, additions. I never use the word amend. But when you made the motion, you're on page one of six. Yes, right? I am. Sheila, you use the term amend. So that's why I had Kathy recorded as amend. Okay. Would you like to have it motion to change, motion to delete? Um, no. I, what I'm saying is I don't understand why we have the whole sentence in there. Why don't we just that, saying it's passing with? I know, but you made, that mo you made it as a motion, so I didn't want her mm -hmm. to record it as anything other than exactly trying to be as transparent and accurate. I asked her to use that term because that's what you said. Okay. Then leave it. But uh, absolutely, you can say, can we, t I'd like to change such a percentage, or the spelling is wrong, you don't need a motion to correct spelling. But because you had said that, I didn't want to go against what you had said. Understood.
I have a question here. She doesn't even sound like herself. Mm -hmm. Yes, is that you, Dr. Ferrer? Yeah, yeah, I'm just, uh, hang on. <laughs> I'm up to it. I recognize the <laughs> look to see. What's <clears throat> up, kiddo? Which page? I'm on page four. Four. <clears throat> Okay, I think I understand it. On the second motion there, there's just a word missing. It should say Mr. O'Neill motion to amend. Okay. Mm -hmm. Add that word in, Kim. Yeah, I mean, that's just, it's, that's nothing. I, I, it was something else that I thought was missing, but it, that's fine. She missed the two in there. She... Mm -hmm. Anything else? If not, I'm going to call for a vote so we can move the meeting along. All those in favor of the minutes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-twenty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-twenty-one, forty-twenty-two, forty-twenty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, forty-fifteen, forty-sixteen, forty-seventeen, forty-eighteen, forty-nineteen, forty-twenty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven,
And I understand that sometimes it can be a challenge having one law firm represent potentially three separate entities. One of the concerns that I have going through some of these right to knows and some of these invoices are I want to be sure that there's some type of um, double checking where these billings are going to and to make sure that things that are being billed to Timberlane are exclusive 100% only associated with Timberlane. Because I see that for you know, the past 60 days being billed directly to Timberlane from Drummond Woodsum is over $40,000. One month, one invoice, January 31st, um, costs incurred. And I know that you guys have had a lot going on, but this invoice is dated February 21st, $30,863.76. One invoice. There's a lot. And as I go through some of these line items, and I can appreciate the double redaction, I appreciate that for, for privacy information. Um, but as I go through some of these line items, I'm having a hard time reconciling where some of these expenses might be billed directly to Timberlane, and that these might be more SAU expenses and expenditures. So I just want to make sure that I'm illuminating this as a result of the right to know fulfillments, that all of these expenses should be billed where they're being billed. I'm a taxpayer, I'm a shareholder, I have concerns, um, and the more concerns I have, the further down the rabbit hole I'm going to go. And I'm going to keep asking questions, and I'm going to keep illuminating issues, and this is one of them. And if my tax bill keeps going up, I want to make sure that the, the, it's, the billing is appropriate, especially if we're in this partnership with Hampstead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. <clears throat> okay. On the current business, um, who was presenting the school calendar? So we'll start with school calendar, please. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm bringing before you this evening a proposed revision to the 1920 school calendar, as well as two options for the 2021 uh, school calendars. Um, seeking your approval for both of these, the revision and the proposed 2020-21. Um, I'm happy to say that uh, for both of these school calendars, uh, we were able to work collaboratively with the TTA and TSSU. Um, both of those unions offered um, some great uh, feedback and input into the development of these calendars. So I'd like to start with the proposed revision of the 1920 our upcoming school year and if you um, if you take a look at that one there we, what we did here for our revision is we took one of the PD days from the end of August and we built um, that PD day into the uh, course of the school year so um, that would start students back on Wednesday the 28th where that was originally um, proposed as a professional development day we are also looking at um, a revision to extend the Labor Day weekend to include both Friday the uh, 30th and Monday, um, September 2nd. And uh, I guess one other thing to note would be that we would be looking at moving <coughs> the tentative last day uh, of the school year from what was originally Monday, June 15th, to uh, an early release last uh, final day, or tentatively final day, um, of being June 16th. Uh, Christy, where did you put, where did you embed the other professional development day within the calendar? We have, that? we have one, you'll see what that was built into um, October. Um, I believe that is October 15th, so that extends the Columbus Day weekend. We have another PD day that was built into January, and um, our third PD day is uh, at the end of March, the 24th. Questions? Other questions, Kim? I, I'm not in favor of moving these PD, PD days into the, the academic year. I know that you've got working parents out there as a single mom myself 
these sorts of things are really impactful on people that have got to figure out what to do with their children when you're interspersing something that's kind of out of whack with the rest of the schedule. I'm just, I'm not for it. I'd rather see all these PD days at the beginning or at the end of the academic year. I, I think it's really hard on working parents. It's my understanding that the we've always had two professional development days at the end of August prior to the start of the school year. It was only in the last, um, I believe, in the last two years that due to some uh, extensive training that we were doing with staff members that we built in that third day. Um, certainly the input um, from, from our uh, professional staff as well as our support staff was um, to utilize our professional development days over the course of the year, which allows us then to, um, to offer uh, professional <coughs> experiences for our staff, but also look at dividing that up over the course of the year, uh, as opposed to putting it all at the, um, at the start of the school year. Many of our, our teachers during that time period are, um, are really anxious to get into their classrooms and set up for classrooms, that type of thing. So we sort of balance that out with one building PD day and one district PD day that tends to be more about professional development and curriculum curriculum work and such. So it sort of feels um, that we've kind of done a, a, a nice compromise and a, and a balance by, um, by leaving two days there at the end of August and then um, building a third day into the school year. And I understand, though, your, your area of concern. Sheila. Okay, so now we have three PD days and I'm looking at this right, three early release days? Now, don't, aren't those typically also teachers and yeah. I know they report card days yeah. sometimes yeah. and... Yeah, parent-teacher conferences, they're <coughs> for the uh, early release at the end of <coughs> October. Um, and then we have just one other uh, that we utilize uh, in May, the Friday before Memorial Day weekend. So there are two built in. There, there are two. Um, the last day um, of school just is the a early half day for students. Just yes. Early Teachers work the full day. They do. Yes, Jen. I'd love to not have to have the kids come in August 28th and 29th, mm -hmm. if that's at all possible. Um, but my bigger concern looking at this is through October, November, December, January, especially December, January, there's um, an awful lot of Mondays that the kids aren't gonna be in school. Mm -hmm. And with the block scheduling being like it is, um, I think that poses a lot of challenges for the kids to be missing that many Mondays. Um, well, that's the cal <coughs> how the calendar falls. That's Christmas week, week yeah. that you're looking in December, right? And then the well, observed does, holidays well, as well. Well, I mean, well. It, it is, but December 20th, so then 21, 22. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess so. And then, so, but then we have... The PD on the... Yeah, then we've got the, P, the PD day on in January mm -hmm. on that, on a Monday. I guess maybe I would, can we move that? Because then they've got the following Monday off. That's the holiday that we can't really do a whole lot about. And then we go into February, which is a short month with another Monday off. It just looks like a lot of Mondays. <clears throat> well, there's Mondays so in every day. I, I know. You know. Sometimes four, sometimes five. Mm -hmm. Um, we do get away from that in 2021. Um, no, November 11th, our Veterans Day, is doesn't fall on a Monday um, right. so that particular the, year. But official holiday falls. Sometimes it doesn't fall on. A I Monday. know, and yeah. I want to ask a question. I'll come back to you, Sean, uh, about um, the contract. Um, how many PD days are they contracted to do? Is it five? Uh, let's see. yes. So it's the three. Uh, during the course of the school year, plus the two, yes, at the start of the school year. have a contract obligation to have five professional development opportunities for our staff. And I hear what Kim is saying. Mm -hmm. um, I, even though I'm not a single mom, I was a working mom, right. and trying to figure out while I was working at those workshops what to do with a child does become a challenge. I understand we're all in that same kind of boat to find a place safe for our children. Uh, but there are things that happen during a school year. So if you put all the PD days at the beginning, there's some great things that happen during the year. Absolutely. And the reason we scattered them in, in my experience, was so that 
we didn't have a Sue Sherman who said, boy, there's a great workshop happening in Boston on cellular biology on uh, January 13th. I'm gonna, I'd like to go to that and think, well, you know, they're trying to offer things through the year that might help you uh, develop professionally. Um, that's, that's my only um, caveat to that, other than it's a contractual obligation we've made with our teachers to offer that for them. So, Sean, question. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to recommend that, you know, to accommodate both Jen's point, which is very valid, and so is Kim's. And, I mean, everybody's point's valid. But if we could move the two professional development dates to January 2nd and 3rd, you turn around and utilize two complete weeks of vacation, equal numbers of days of the week, so that nobody would ever be missing um, multiple Mondays, for example, in the block scheduling. And then it frees the days up to accommodate people scheduling they're already on vacation that week we're coming back to school for two days to go back into a weekend two weeks off for christmas <laughs> maybe some people will like that it's a long time <laughs> Well, see, now you hear that. Cause, okay, no, but, I'm just no. it's joking. I'm, I'm, She's no, don't joking. That Thursday and Friday makes that a two. Oh, some of the kids from college, I mean, they're, they're here a yeah, month, yeah, month and a half. Like five weeks off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we've got that as well. I like that idea. I like John's idea. So that you can move the March uh, 24th and the January 11th, no, 13th, excuse me, days to the 2nd and the 3rd of January. Again, putting them there. What professional development workshops do you think are going to be available the 2nd and 3rd of January? <clears throat> uh, again, spreading them out a little bit gives uh, opportunities, whether it's in whatever our goals are for the next school year, our building goals or our own professional goals to offer some of those. Could, could be a bullying workshop, but on the 2nd and 3rd of January, not necessarily the optimum time to do it. So. How much are we tied in, Christy, to um, Pinkerton and the other schools we send to for our vocational stuff? Yeah, so the way that the, the 1920 um, calendar has been proposed, we're pretty much in sync with um, our uh, schools that we send students to. Uh, unfortunately, when we get to 20, uh, 2021, um, those other school districts have not yet. Um, yeah, they have not. Yet. So we approved this back in May, mm -hmm. uh, and we just add, it just changed one of the PD days from August into, what did you say, January? Right. That's the change. Yeah. So, so what, can I ask, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, 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 no. go. Yeah. Of course, the board has changed since May. Yes. I, I was just going to ask, so there was a PD day in August that got moved. So was there only one instead, day of school in August? Instead of having it on probably the Wednesday, it was going to be. Oh, no. I, no. Yeah. It was originally. They were going to go to school Thursday, it, 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 Friday. Friday. Right. right. Yeah. And we had a lot yeah. of opposition. I got it. I got That's it. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of opposition, parent-wise, to it's the Friday of Labor Day weekend, and yeah. we'd like to leave a little bit early. Right. So we're trying to accommodate that as well. It's ridiculous to go for calendar two days planning is probably morning. one of the most um, frustrating mm -hmm. things I ever participated in with the union because this was my have one they, of my things here. Have the use of blizzard bag days helped alleviate some of that um, going to school? later so that maybe we could just not be here those two days in August. <clears throat> it's a wild card on the weather, though. I don't have any know. professional development before school no, starts? No, no, just maybe move those PD days to the 28th, 29th. And yeah, you just year. never know where, you know, last year we ended up with 10, right? Five one. blizzard bags and five snow days. Well, the blizzard bags don't count on anything, but the, the actual days that you do without a blizzard bag, those are days that are Already getting tacked on to the, right. past the early release. You may speak to them. Yeah, no, um, Mr. O'Neill makes a good, a good point. I actually um, I had a, a seventh grader, um, Brady Stack, who uh, came over today to ask a little bit about this very topic about, because there's been some talk, and you know there are some districts that count hours, not days. Um, so we, we, we look at that in terms of there's an X amount of hours they have to do. So the, some schools, they're not making up the time. They're just counting the hours. Now, we, we do pretty much a hybrid version of that. The, we do it for high school graduation because the seniors have met the hours. So we can set a date, which at some point you'll be setting that date in that first weekend in June. 
Um, we also try not to look at orphan days. Like, for instance, if, if we ended on a Friday in June and we had one makeup, we wouldn't want to come back for one day that Monday. But the conversation we had was really we don't want to, we want to make sure that they have the number of days they're supposed to have, too. So that's like a philosophical thing with the board. Like, we don't want to get into only doing 170 days of school because we made the hours, right? Because it, it, it really, if you added up our hours, you'd be shocked at how many additional hours we go above and beyond what the minimum standards for the state of New Hampshire are. And so I've, I've gotten a lot of inquiries about why do we have to make up any of these days? We could just count the hours and you're all set. And I was like, well, we, we have some contractual obligations in terms of 180 days of work. Um, so those are some of the discussions. 187. But I think, 187. 187. 180 <laughs> plus the seven. Yes. Plus the 180 days with 180 students days. and then seven additional days. Seven so, additional days. Um, so there are those options, too, um, you know, in terms of counting hours as opposed to days. Lee. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of the two days in August either. Um, I just think it, uh, it's not a good rhythm. What if we shifted left in the calendar? So you had professional development on the Thursday and Friday of the week before. You start so now school. you're asking staff to come a whole week earlier? But they'd be getting out a whole week earlier, too. Right? Okay. If, you, if you shift the whole calendar left. You mean up? up. Line, linearly left, but yes. Up. up. <laughs> hmm? I'm not following that. Have them come the... the 20 yeah, let, me, let me get a calendar in front of me so, so I can see the 22nd dates. and 23rd. So you'd have people here so the 22nd start. and 23rd, new teacher Week workshops. Four. Correct. And you'd start school the 26th. Let's start school on the 26th. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that does also bump up our new teacher orientation right. and in mentoring and induction, those, those three or four days as well. And moves us further away from the traditional Labor Day start. Kristen, what do you think? What do I think? Which is standard in Hampshire wants. Kristen wants to come out. Kristen's trying to. No, I'm just, I'm just taking it all in because I agree with, with Kim's point. I, I don't like seeing the professional development days throughout the year. I understand the point of maybe having that opportunity for training, but I also know that teachers go to training throughout the year, correct? I mean, there's many times when they're so. not in class, there's substitutes. I mean, so they are getting their training and they have that availability. And I can't imagine as a district if we had a teacher that had some opportunity to go to some great workshop, we're going to say, oh, no, you can't because it doesn't fall on March 28th on this, this day. I mean, I think we're allowing them to do that. So uh, maybe, that, maybe not, I don't know. But yeah. I would think that we would want to see that. So having those days built throughout the year, it does, from what I hear, it causes a hardship for many of the parents that are out there. And I'm looking at this, and I'm seeing two Mondays in a row in – in January, where you're just coming off, as Sean said, I mean, you would have just had a Christmas break. You're coming back for, a, you know, parents are going back to work for one full week, and all of a sudden you have two Mondays that you have to find coverage for because not all parents have that holiday, and now we have a professional development day, um, and it's hard to get that coverage. Yeah, I hear you. Could at we that find point, a, could it really we find is. A, could we find a compromise and so, uh, put that professional development day not on a Monday? I feel like we could. Huh? I feel like we could. But it's still, it, but it's then there, it, the problem is it doesn't matter where you put it. It's still just, it's hard. It's well, it's just it's thrown in the middle of something. Mondays. Early releases are hard. People forget we even have them. Half the time you get the frantic phone calls and all the, oh, my God, my kid's getting off the bus. I know the calendar's there. They have a duty, but it makes it hard. As a parent, it's really difficult to all of a sudden realize, oh, I have this day and I have to find coverage for my kids. <clears throat> it's just not always easy to do that. Um, so having them... I'm just saying, I mean, I know the calendar's there and people can plan for it, but it doesn't matter whether it's a Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. It's just a hard thing. So <coughs> I like seeing them at the beginning or the end or, or, you know, I mean, if you have to do one through the year, I mean, I guess I, I don't know what a good day is. So I, I do. I struggle with it because I see the ups and downs from both sides. Well, and you um, have a contractual obligation. But so. then I go, absolutely, but then I look at the, you know, again, the August week, and I, I mean, I hear what you're saying, that you did that because people want to leave and go early, but I look at it that a lot of people have already been forced to come back. Your vacation's over. You're back that week. So if I'm forced to come back, I really don't want to come back to send my kid for two days. Now, it doesn't really matter to me because my kids are fall athletes, so they're here in the beginning of August. I mean, so it doesn't matter, but I know a lot of parents, and mm -hmm. if you're being told you can't be on vacation that week because your kid has to be at school, and I'm told my can't be on vacation because my kids have to be at practice, I mean... 
Can I? You know, where's the balance? We have to. I'm, I'm at a point where. What the if origin? You excuse me. That I'd say you're going to need to bring this back, Christy. Um, we've spent now 25 minutes, and I'm not hearing any consensus at all. Move it left. Move it up. <clears throat> take away Mondays. Take away PD days, which we can't contractually do. Um, put them all at the beginning of the year, put them all at the end of the year. I think you need to go back to the drawing board with this. I don't think. Uh, Can I just ask one more question on that? Sure. The, what's the purpose of the early release on the Friday, May 22nd? Could we move that January PD day over there? That's a Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, but if there's not a, if it's just getting <coughs> early just because it's a weekend, could, is, would that be a good swap to move that PD day too? Something that we can consider, I suppose. If if I'm if I'm going to take this back, I'll take all um, all input into consideration. And when is our last day of school right now? This year? Yeah, this I is, know. This is not this year. I, I, I know. I know. But well, we're let's on the not get calendar. our public no. any more confused. This is not. No, no, this, I know. This year's calendar. It, it's been a question floating around quite a bit. I saw it. I don't know. On Facebook, I saw it. Mm -hmm. I apologize. I know I missed the beginning of this. Um, these changes that were, are here, uh, these are these are from the teachers. This is TTA recommendations right, to this calendar. Started that way. Okay, yeah, so you, you were aware of that, yeah. yeah. This are recommendations from TSSU and TTA. Yeah. Just a quick, um, we one have a collaboration one with change. them. Yeah, one change. Yeah. And we have we have um, an option similar the following year to, mm -hmm. to Sean's point of those two weeks around Christmas. Um, I don't know if you've already looked at that. We haven't looked at those that yet. We haven't even gotten that far. <laughs> um, so there's a couple calendars to look at. But, you know, we, we danced around with this a few years ago because there were board members and parents that wanted our professional development to be on Fridays because they wanted long weekends. I think you all know that Friday professional development isn't necessarily our best option for doing PD. And so we, we've, we've really danced around a lot um, with this. And we kind of have to pick one thing and let people count on it so they can plan. If we're coming back after Labor Day, we're after Labor Day. If we're coming back before Labor Day, um, but people need to be able to count on this um, as they plan. So that's that's my two cents. So with the 2021, 20, uh, um, as I shared with you, there's uh, two options. Um, you'll have two calendars there in front of you labeled A and B. You'll see that uh, there are many similarities to um, the 1920 that we just discussed. I think the most significant difference would be in option B, um, the um, extended time for the holiday break. With that extended time built in, you'll notice that the tentative last day um, of school for students is also pushed out uh, to Friday, uh, June 18th. Uh, again, that's calendar B. And uh, calendar A, tentative last day for students would be Wednesday, June 16th. Many similarities in terms of the professional development days, the student start day. So to, to give the board some perspective here, the last, I would say, <coughs> four years, um, we've always done two years at a, ahead. We're always ahead. <clears throat> it helps us when we're working with our vocational schools, and et cetera. And hopefully, if we could make a decision, helps parents to know those dates even sooner. Jen. Um, on option B, I don't ever like ending on a Friday because I guarantee, yeah, yeah. guaranteed we're going to be in school that next week. And that's getting kind of late. I like option A better because even if there's a couple snow days we still might get out on that Friday mm -hmm. however on option B that PD day on December 28th looks better to me than on the 11th we'll put so, it there. so my recommendation would be move from the go Monday. go with a except move that PD day over to the 28th that's just my personal <laughs> So that's an accommodation you could make. We have your same issue too. Within January, the multiple um, <coughs> the multiple yeah. Mondays. Mondays. Well, you'd be uh, moving that PD saying, day off of. She's that saying take 11. it off the Monday on the 11th. Oh, take it. Oh. Put, put it, it to the 28th, <coughs> which is yeah. the hybrid. Yeah. So you're looking at a hybrid calendar. I will share with you. There was um, TTA feedback with regard to having the uh, PD day uh, later that month, um, as it does interfere a bit with um, midterms and the quarter end and a quarter uh, begin. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, that would be difficult for um, our teachers at the secondary level to end a quarter on a certain day and then to begin. Um, 
begin, say, on the, on let, let's just say 10, I, I, I'd have to go back through and recount these, but let's say a quarter two ending on, um, say, January 26th, having kiddos come back for one day and then going out again for a PD day. Mm -hmm. some We do take some of that into consideration, too. Uh, we do a, a lot of counting for trimesters and quarters and taking into consideration midterm exams on all of that. So lots of considerations go into designing these calendars, but that was one piece we hadn't spoken about. Sheila. Then why can't you move the PD in January to the 19th? And then you have Wednesday. a Monday and a Tuesday. You have an A and a B schedule, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That gives a long weekend for the parents. Is midterm week. Yes, that, that is mid midterm is week. Is that yes. finals? That's yes. the beginning <laughs> of finals. <laughs> yeah, that, and that, that is the midterms just be pushed out one more day? It would almost be like putting the PD day on Wednesday the 27th. Midterms would be split between those two weeks, right? Right, because you, if you put a PD day in there, yeah. okay. Then, then what about the fifteenth? That would be a Friday PD day. I, you know, again, that would One be minute. something that Dr. Metzler just spoke about in terms of the, you know, the appropriateness of putting a professional learning experience on a Friday. <clears throat> for staff, I, 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 I hear what you're saying. There's lots of pieces here that we try to consider. To follow up on your comment, Dr. Metzler, um, your conversation with Brady and about going to the hour. I mean, we're all sitting here and we're doing this and we're talking about the last day of school and whatnot. I mean, luckily this year, knock on wood, we really only had one snow day and three blizzard bag days, correct? That's, I believe that's and correct. We're in a situation where we have that last day is a Friday originally on the, uh, the, cool, the school calendar. So we're looking at that orphan day, as you put it, on making that up on a Monday. Um, if we were counting hours, we potentially, it's something that we could lose that Monday if we had enough hours, correct? I right, mean, we, if, if that's the, I'm just we, hypothetically we, speaking. Yeah, we would definitely have enough hours and we would come to you and say, this is what we're recommending because we have that one day. And so that way we would do that in advance because we know probably by the time May rolls around, we, we know what the end of the year is going to look like. And then it's, it gives everyone an opportunity to plan their year-end activities yeah. so that they can end appropriately and, and so. Um, yeah, and I, I wanted to mention too, Brady. Brady was awesome. He, so, he, he really knows his stuff kid. and uh, challenged a lot of this. He so. has a good mentor yeah. on this subject. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, are we locked? I mean, we count days. Are we locked into that? Can we switch no. over to counting hours at any point in time? Is this something we can consider and talk about and maybe look at these schedules differently? Because if we were doing that, you know, then we might say, I mean, people are saying they don't want to come back. For those two days, it's come to school for sometimes. two days. Well, you have to come to school, but, but Fortunate. again, here's your, here's your, here's your. I'm throwing that out. <laughs> it's not about not coming to school. Though. Such rational Should thinking. Not just September. So to answer your question, we yes. we are we locked in with a collective bargaining agreement. 180 days with students, seven days professional development. Right. We have some flexibility with the state with hours because mm -hmm. we've asked them in the yes. past to. You know, this is what we're counting because our seniors have met their hour, hourly, you know, ob obligations so that they can graduate on a particular date. So you guys can lock in a date, right. and uh, yeah, and then you do have some flexibility. I, I just, I just caution: we don't want to cut back the number of days. No, and I'm not saying you. I, I would, you would do your calendar with your 180 and the hopes of doing that, and still the blizzard bags, and if you had to shift, but. You know, if you start getting into these these lost days, or it might give you a little more flexibility to say you don't start coming back with on two days on a two day week because that seems to be a big concern with a lot of people in summer. And if you knew that you had that option, you see what I'm saying? To do that at the end, you could start, mm -hmm. you know, on that Monday after Labor Day, or well, unfortunately, you can't do that in 2020 because of the way Labor Day falls so late that year. But I'm just saying to look at it with a different eye towards that and then maybe, you know, if that's something that's a consensus no, I, to I start looking agree. at. Because the biggest concern, I mean, we all want the kids to get the 180 days. I mean, we want them to get the education. You don't want to cut back on the hours and say, well, we had a bad year. But some years you might have that. And to be locked into, well, we have to do the 180 days and now kids are going till June 20th and later, then that starts to impact so many other things, you know, on the flip side. So to your point, I think so, we, we do that. It's it's we're using like a hybrid, so we're using the blizzard bags and the right. hours if we need them. We would come and make that recommendation to you to look you to appro to approve an, an end date 
in the event we had off, I call them orphan days. So if they okay. ended up like a Monday or a Tuesday. That's so um, So we have that flexibility. We know what day we can, we, we never know what the last day is going to be. We, we, we definitely know what the first day will be. <clears throat> yeah. Right? Because right. the last day gets moved and then we would come to you with recommendations. We just haven't had to do that. Right. And the hours thing is relatively new. It, this isn't something we've had an option for years. This has just been the last couple of years, correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Right. yeah. 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 And one more observation on this. Of course. I could. Uh, on option B, we're looking at a tentative last day of June 18th. And if people are somewhat okay with June 18th-ish being the last day, I would prefer to look at option A, move that whole first week of August forward so the kids aren't coming back until the 31st, and take those two days and put them on the end of June. So now they'd be coming back. Uh, back to the 18th yeah. anyway, right? You'd yeah. move the early release to the Friday, right, and then put the... Wouldn't even have to. It would be too... I mean, really, it wouldn't have to be an early release counts as a full day. So even if you moved the early release to Thursday, took the June 27th, 28th, and moved them, I mean, the August 27th, 28th, and tacked them on. That's why I was saying move it to Friday. Mm -hmm. the, mm. From Wednesday to Friday, right. and you'd put Wednesday, Thursday, those right, two right, days. Right. Yep. Yeah. That's, a, yeah. that's another option you have. And then you run into that situation you mentioned earlier about snow days. Right. But and if then, you're okay with doing it on third. option B anyway, then I'd rather take that risk and not have to come back until... Well, if we're doing the blizzard bags, we're talking now, if we do blizzard bags and, and the, the preparation, right, we really don't run into those extra days until we get to day six or se you know, seven. Right. Right. And then we have the option to make the recommendation. You're going to say, we come to you and say, we don't think we should come back to just a Monday or a Monday and Tuesday in late June. We have band camps and all kinds of things that we need to support. And you could support that recommendation, and we can end. You can say we're ending on June 18th. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. you have control over that. That's what I was thinking. So if we end up with that one dangling day there on a Monday, we can just say no, we're done. Switch to hours. Yep. Yeah. The other time we, day we that you can move is is uh, just before Thanksgiving. You have two days there. If you made a professional development day, oh, one no. of those two days. No, no, I'm going hmm. to the mat on that. Nope, not having a professional development. On the day before Thanksgiving. <laughs> it isn't the day before Thanksgiving. It would be the Tuesday or the Monday. Wednesday is already off. Oh, I thought you were going to take away the Wednesday. <laughs> I thought that's what you were saying. Too. That's what I thought you would do. <laughs> <laughs> Far, the TTA. So Thanksgiving's I know that's, up. that's turkey prep. Day. Thanksgiving's out. 90% uh, yeah. of our staff are females. Not off the table. Just going to be a little chauvinist here. <laughs> not, I'm not, wasn't going down that road. <laughs> Took us forever to get that day. <laughs> Just and not, them every, to go not back every to the year drawing board. Not every year works out the same. Yeah. I think Plus 20, it's never 20, 20, 20, 21. <clears throat> but I just kind of looked at that like, okay, if we're okay with that over here, then I, I mean, I would say at least 70% of the people say, don't send me back in August. Do we know what the requirements are for, for hours relative? If we go the 180 days, what we normally do. That translates to so many hours, and mm -hmm. we're above the hour requirement for New Hampshire Board of Education by X hours. It's by level, right? Nine ninety, nine fifty, nine hundred. Isn't that the? Mm -hmm. I don't have it in front of me, but That's yeah, right. it, it it does uh, vary by level. By, by elementary, middle, high school. Right, it's different okay. numbers of hours. But we're in the you know if you if you just did the math you're, we're into the like the eleven hundred right. hours we're 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 a couple hundred hours over so that's that's where I get that we don't want to knock ten days off kind of thing. Um, Oh, back to the drawing board, I think, yeah. here, and uh, we'll put you, Kathy, put them um, down on the month. Yeah. Yeah. Put them down You're on the agenda. Yeah. Um, sorry, Christy, I thought that that revision would be reasonably um, smooth, but okay. thank you. No, not on March 21st. It only gives them two weeks. I'm oh, okay, so on well, April 7th? Sure. Is it April 7th? April 7th. Whatever the April 4th. April 4th. I'm going to skip um, to Mr. Gary and do food service annual review. Oh, Tom? Jeff is here. No, he's not. Oh, he's not in the room. He's upstairs. I'm going to let okay. Tom go. Okay. If that's all right with everybody, I'm not going to wait. Sure. Tom, if you're set, let's rock and roll, buddy. Sure.
All right. Thank you for having me. Tom Geary, Business Operations Quarter for SA Coordinator for SAU 55. John, John Fradiello, Food Service Director for Timberlane Schools. All right, so um, this is basically the same presentation I came to the board with last year, um, just a summary of our food service program. Um, this is the second renewal um, under the original contract between Timberlane School District and Whitson's Culinary Services. So I'll start off with a little background. Just get my papers in order. Uh, Whitson's New England has been Timberlane's food service management company for seven years, and we're currently operating in the second year of the agreement signed in 2017 by the school board. And that was after a thorough bid process to meet not only our bid policy under DJE, but also USDA federal guidelines and New Hampshire DOE guidelines. Okay. In the contract language, you'll notice the big part is the guarantee. Now, this isn't a big money maker for the district. Our guarantee is to break even. Um, and Whitson's has done that for the past few years under this contract. So um, I feel the district has a very close working relationship with Whitson's. Uh, there's a lot of collaboration. And part of that collaboration includes Superintendent's Food Service Advisory Committee, which is comprised of John here, Whitson staff, school administration to work out different issues that they have operationally in the school day. Also part of the Wellness Committee. Uh, frequent meetings with school and district administration aside from those committee meetings. And also on-demand sales reports that we can pull up here at the SAU at any time to see the numbers and track live. One of the results from the collaboration as you can see up here, Whitson's keeps all of their training logged in a central database to make sure that we meet the guidelines and the requirements of USDA and also the New Hampshire Department of Education standards. We um, have to actually provide those reports on a regular basis to those agencies. Also regular kitchen inspections uh, through local, state, federal, and also uh, the school administration. And I'm pleased to report that through Whitson safety training, um, that we've had no accidents this year, we had no accidents last year, and I'm always happy to report that. I know, I hate saying that. I don't <laughs> want to jinx anyone, so. Um, so last year I shared some uh, new menu choices, and this year I've listed some, uh, some of the uh, popular items that are new to the menu this year. As you can see, the hummus is served at all levels, chickpea salad, uh, kale chips, soft pretzel day at the elementary schools, um, ramen, and not like the ramen that you're thinking uh, everybody survived on, you know, going through the college years. Uh, it's actually a, a, a ramen. It's actually a ramen dinner, um, and cracked pepper and honey maple turkey at the high school deli bar has been a big hit this year. So one of the things that Whitson's um, does for us is they have visits from our chef where they'll come in and experiment different menu items and offer tasting for the kids. Um, and I'm not going to reveal who is in the monkey costume on the bottom left-hand corner. So where we haven't closed out this year, I wanted to run through the numbers um, for total meal counts from last year that we had. And as you can see up on the screen, our staff served 299,697 total meals. Um, that's for students. 8,313 adult meals were served and 217,841 a la carte items. And that's separate whether a child wants to go up and purchase a piece of fruit, a bottle of water, um, something from the snack bar. Um, so quite a lot of work our uh, kitchen staff does. Now when we compare, I took numbers from last year um, during this time period from August through February, the end of February um, in 2018 and the same time frame uh, for this year. As you can see for the student meal count, uh, it looks like we're down 0.6 percent. Adult meal count down <coughs> eight, uh, well, I'm sorry, I don't have my glasses on, <laughs> 10 percent. Um, We've increased the a la carte transactions 
And you can see that, that we're up four days, um, so it's 3.8%. Um, and I always like to close by thanking our staff and the hard work they do. Um, and if I can, Madam Chair, just take one minute to just read the first names of all of our staff members throughout our schools just to extend our thank you um, to all the hard work they do on a regular basis. At the high school, we have Stacy, Linda, Cheryl, Carrie, Kelly, Michelle, Catherine, Allison, and Tara. At the middle school, big thank you to Sally, Deb, Janice, Tammy, Eleanor, Beth, Deirdre, and Donna. At Sandown North, I'd like to give thanks to Deb, Jennifer, and Jolene. Pollard School, I'd like to thank Deb, Danielle, and Edwina. At Atkinson, huge thanks to Claire, Carleen, and Amy. At Danville, we have Marion, Sue, and Kristen. At Sandown Central, we have Josephine and Lynn. And we also have substitutes that fill in to make sure that the ship keeps straight, right? So we have Kathleen, Carrie, Amanda, and Melissa. So I, I like to extend our deep appreciation for the hard work that they do in and out to uh, offer our children healthy meals and always with a smile. And every time I'm in the cafeteria, I can reflect and say that they know just about every child by name where they don't even have to ask for their student ID to punch it in the computer. Um, so we have a great group of folks that work really hard. So thank you for allowing me to do that. And. I think in your packet, you should have the contract um, that is with suggested revisions from the New Hampshire Department of Education. You also have the projected financials for next year. As I said, it's a break-even operation and looks like the uh, projection is to return $969 for the district. Um, I think if anybody, if you have any questions or for folks at home, I you know Whitson's runs um, uh, Facebook page, they have the website and Instacart, uh, Instagram page. Um, so they have kind of updates that they do company wide if anybody wants more information on Whitson's. Question, Kim. So the last page of this shows the proposed budget for FY 1920 is 1.279514. Should this be equal to the amount that we would see in 5221930, the food service fund for 1920? Um, I will default to Mr. Dowd when it comes to the complete financials. Okay. I oversee He's the right there. Jeff, if you don't mind. <laughs> this is Jeff's level of expertise, so. Theoretically, yes, but not necessarily in the sense that we may have additional expenses that run through, um, you know, run through the fund that we may need to account for. Um, we we do have commodities as well that we um, should typically account for, but uh, I believe we're right. We should be right around that um, neighborhood in terms of what's budgeted. We didn't really have this budget put together when we uh, put it together itself, but approximately. This number wasn't together when you did the proposed budget? Yeah, the, this budget came through in the past few weeks. Yeah, last week. Yeah. That comes from the corporate level uh, management mm -hmm. from Whitson's after they analyze kind of through this year's trend and uh, see what the sales are. But we went up 125000 in the proposed budget for 1920, so I'm just trying to figure out why we would have gone up if we had no idea that this number was if we didn't know what this number was going to be. Because we didn't have enough in the budget in the previous year. Or year. So, so in from the proposed budget. In the proposed budget. Mm -hmm. So from a technical perspective, there there could be a risk that Department of Revenue Administration could come in and say, you know, you, you, you have, you, you'd be spending more than what your budget allows. Mm -hmm. We're going to disallow those expenditures. So I'm not sure if we, you know, what that would result in if, if we would close down kitchens and May or June. So you think that's what would happen? They would just close us down in May or June? No, no. I said I don't know what would happen, but we, we certainly do not have enough money budgeted, and it would be appropriate to budget that amount um, to cover what we're expecting. Okay. So I'm just trying to – so it looks like we've over-budgeted a little for 1920. I just – I want to call attention that I don't believe that that line item is tied all the time directly to this contract. Right. There are other expenses that come out of that account, whether it's compressors for the freezers or food service equipment that the district purchases. So mm -hmm. it's not sp just tied to this contract. That's just wanted to bring that point up. Okay. Other questions? Sean and then Pearl. Oh, go ahead, Sean. Okay. 
I was just wondering, you know, because if we're getting this kind of information now, I mean, this would have been great information like two months ago. So the question is, is there any way going forward that we can sort of slide this into the budget. Er, earlier in the budgeting season so that we can have an accurate <clears throat> look at what, what we're seeing here and proposing so that we're all on the same cylinders? Firing. I could make the request. I think we'd be looking at November, December, have that in. And not that's that's reasonable. You know, I'm happy to make that request. Yeah. I mean, to Whitsons you know, to, to the corporate level to see mm -hmm. if we can get that earlier. Um, but I mean, it's just hard to budget that far yeah. out. I mean, we as operators want to know well, how, how far into <laughs> this year we can go before we tell you how next year. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're budgeting we now have. for <laughs> well, know, for, for your it's stuff. Hard, it's, it's hard for you guys too, I'm sure. But we know, for example, you have a, a run rate where we are this year, where the trends are um, this year, in addition to having last year, as you know, where we're at this year. So at least you have, you have, uh, an idea, yeah, more, at least more, at Let's least over the half year. Let's take that recommendation back, Tom, and see yeah. if you can get something. Yeah, from yeah and I know, like, this year of, of any was difficult. I mean, I can't even say for the corporate side to plan because for a while, there was some, un, a lot of people were unsure of the commodities where it was a, it's a federal program mm -hmm. and also there was a federal shutdown. So, I mean, there was some uncertainty. Um, so, Other questions? I'm happy to make that request for you, though, Mr. O'Neill. Oh, Earl yeah. then Lee. Um, in, this, in this budget that you have here, um, to, to Dr. Farris' point, where are the, if, if at all, are the negative account balances reflected? Just gonna Meaning. Ask that money owed to the district. I know we, we talk about revenue and then there's the negative revenue, the money that we did not receive for meals that were served. Is Correct. It, is it? Yeah, no, those are not reflected in that in that budget. Do we know roughly what the balance of the negative account balance lunches are as we? I don't have that off the top of my head. I want to double check it to be sure for it, uh, first. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to Pull those numbers down. I didn't. Could I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared for that number tonight. Um, no, I this uh, and I apologize because I, yeah. I could obviously ask you at any time. I don't mean to ask you here, but yeah. um, my understanding is normally hovering in, in in the six figures, right? Is it is it that much? So. No, no, I no. We so we're in better shape. Fifty thousand. I think that, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's what shape. I was, was going to estimate around fifty thousand. Well, let's not estimate. Let's yeah. get so, the actual answer so that we're not just sitting here saying numbers. That's okay. Yeah, no. uh, the, uh, Lee, sorry. So two questions. One's regarding the contract. Yes, if you go to page, where I go from 14 to 15, uh, section 6.3, the guarantee. And then on page 15, which is part of the guarantee, about, I don't know, a little, little bit, of, close to about a third of the way down, part V. The student enrollment for the term of the agreement will be not less than 3,000 students. And then it, it continues, and then it goes on to the final paragraph at the bottom of the page. In the event the foregoing conditions are not met during the term of this agreement, the food service operating budget and guarantee shall be adjusted by the amount equivalent to any increased cost or loss of reven revenue attributable to the change in conditions. The way I read this, we're guaranteeing Whitsons that we will have enrollment of 3,000 students during the term. What happens if we go to 2982? Um, I think that would warrant a discussion with the management from Whitsons um, to hash out. What, what potential penalty is there? What, well, what are we putting ourselves out there for? Well, maybe if we rephrase it, we're not guaranteeing. 3,000 students for Whitson's. Whitson's is guaranteeing us break even with 3,000 students. So again, if we go to 2982, what's our exposure? Well, if we are at break even, then there's no, you know, if we're still at break even, there's no, no issue, right? Yeah, see, the way I read that last paragraph, though, we're, <clears throat> we're guaranteeing them 3,000 students. They're basing their revenue generation off of 3,000 students. If we go below that, it seems like we're on the hook for loss of revenue attributable to the change oh no like we wouldn't we wouldn't be responsible to them for that in fact if anything i think Whitson's has been pretty accommodating you keep an eye on your numbers where we've had fewer students or we've had uh, fewer um, participation in lunch we've we've been able to reduce costs or they've been able to reduce costs which has been uh, which has been helpful in that regard but if we were, if we were below three thousand if we if we were at break even i don't think anyone's gonna yeah, to me, really. to, the language just makes me really uncomfortable. I, I would like to see some type of 
Exponential. exclusionary statement yeah. in there that says this is yeah. the standard stuff we agreed to this last was in the year. This was in the this original. No contract. changes from We're here for a renewal. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, ju I'm just raising a concern. I, I see a, a gap here that puts us out for some exposure. Year. Well, and let's let's take a little uh, a little view at a, at a term higher than that, another term that we have in there, and another item that's in there, and it's under <clears throat> that same section 6.3. I believe it's on page 15, and it's under the guarantee Romanet uh, six. Which says that our our labor costs that are charged to or that are included as part of the break even shall not exceed three hundred and sixty five thousand. So last year our labor costs would have been around let's say three hundred and twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. But if our labor costs that our district labor costs we were charging to their contract was uh, yeah. three hundred and seventy five thousand, well now we've we've exceeded what you know if they're over by ten thousand. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, they're over by 10000 because we're over 10000 in our labor yeah. we charge them. So I view it in that context. So if, if they came back at, at, with a loss of 10000 in that case, they could say, well, you're, you know, we, we based our guarantee, Whitson's guarantee, on 365, you're at 375000 Therefore, we should be adjusting that looking and, and saying, look, the, the true number is going to be, you know, not break even. The true number is going to be a loss of 10000 because you've exceeded, the district has exceeded its Correct. Its and that, that's, that, that's exactly my point, right? So they had... There was an a, an overage in their expenditures, mm -hmm. so we would be liable for that expenditure. The way I read section section V is they're basing they're making a revenue assumption. Right. If we're short on number of students, their revenue assumptions fall short. I'm afraid. I just I'm afraid we're on the hook there. So if if my revenue assumption, let's use um, two dollars per student round numbers. Their revenue assumption for a month is six thousand mm. dollars. Well, if we only had two thousand students, their revenue is four thousand dollars. Is Timberlane on the hook for the negative? Yeah, we wouldn't be on the hook to pay them the additional in revenue. But when we look at break even and we look at what their guarantee is, and their guarantee is the management fee mm -hmm. um, up to thirty one. Well, this is thirty one eighty eight, I believe. Management fee, yeah, thirty one thousand eighty eight. In this instance, um, okay. we we simply wouldn't. We wouldn't be refunded that from them um, if we had a revenue issue right. resulting yeah. from. Uh, I mean, we've never had one, and yeah, I mean, it's significantly lower than the present enrollment. And okay. I think also too to call attention to um, letter A in that same section where we're talking about school days. It's probably good good time to bring that up after we just talked about the calendar. Hey, I was going to bring that up, yeah. And we didn't have any. We haven't had issues with that. Okay. Uh, and then the other question I had was. The My School Bucks program app funding, whatever, whatever you want to call it, that is that part of this contract? No, no. that's a separate vendor, separate. Yes. yes. Okay. So I was um, I was part of um, the renegotiation of this contract when I first started, when we and, and John was part of that, where we increased the give back to the district. Right. At one time it was twenty five thousand. Okay. We, we increased it to, and so the lease points and I. I I appreciate the conversation, but um, to this number of students, and I asked about this 3,000 student, um, you know, how are we going to attribute the number of me meals served based on the number of students, and what's our, what's our exposure here? And I was told that really that's more, this is boilerplate language to um, protect them in the event they had a five-year deal and two towns left Timberlane, and they went from, we went from 3,000 students to 1,000 students. They wouldn't be able to give us $35,000 right. back because we can't make the revenue. So... We don't really have exposure here, and I understand your caution when you read it because these are the questions I asked when we were renegotiating, uh, and they were nice enough to increase the, the give back because they were they knew they were going to at least break even um, based on, um, you know, that first year is always a risky year because they're not sure, but once they felt comfortable here, uh, they were pretty pretty solid on these numbers. So I think we're in, we're in good shape with this particular okay. contract. So the real risk then is, is a reduction in the give back, not necessarily a penalty payment. Correct. Right. Not out of pocket. That's right. Got it. From us. Okay. Makes sense. Other questions or concerns? Because I'd be looking for a motion to move on. Sean. What is the difference between on the expense side? There's payroll and district payroll. Those are certain of the employees are uh, Whitson's employees directly, which would be payroll, and certain employees are, are our employees are, are okay. district employees. So we provide them with those uh, figures, and so that's what they that's what they've included. So we would provide 
what what's in with the what we paid for payroll for Timberland employees. Correct. And then they include it in the overall financial, so we can get a real good picture as to as how our our food service operation is performing with their labor and our labor included. What kind of insight do we have into, for example, I mean, it stated the sales are one point two eight million. Is there an auditing process that we can look at? I mean, do, is this something that just all Whitson's look, looks at or tells us? I mean, what kind of? We it, that's a fair question, and so there are a couple things that that happen, and we watch um, the funds coming in, like you know, into the <coughs> registers and being sold. We put together a separate schedule and compare what's being reported to us from our system and based on the prices that we would anticipate and based on the aid that we expect to receive and compare that to what Whitson's is also reporting. So we, we, we have some checks and balances in place uh, on the whole thing. Um, you know, we have access to, um, we'll call yeah. it. Yeah, as I said, I mean, in the presentation, we have full access to the, the uh, POS system. So yeah. we can track every single item that's sold. We call it my, we've called it my school bucks, but it's really mm -hmm. Nutri Kids. So we run our reports <coughs> on our end and compare that to the receipts that are coming no, in. No, it's good. It's just basically it's an right. opportunity to say that, you know, all the cards are laid out on the table and everybody gets to see well, exactly. All the revenue goes into your bank account. Mm -hmm. There is no, we don't hand over money. It gets deposited into a school lunch bank account that is your okay. our district account, bank account, which we can compare mm -hmm. what the system is reporting that we've sold to what we've deposited, which we do. Okay. So it's a fair question. In addition to that, I might add that we also do go out and Tom mentioned the actual administration going out and auditing. He or I have gone out in the past independently Good. and undertake our own reviews of the kitchens and their operations. And I'm very, very pleased to report there. It may not be the fanciest around compared to some of the commercial kitchens out there. I would not hesitate at all to have um, you know, my, my children um, into those kitchens. I'm very, very pleased every time I go up. And I think I'm, to I mentioned at last year's presentation is we had a um, federal audit from USDA, um, which we did uh, I passed with flying colors. They were impressed with uh, how we tracked and how we verified sales, too, because we actually have to stand at the register and verify mm. sales uh, for the schools. Earl, then, those Jennifer. Yeah, to, to Sean's point, you know, there was, there was several years ago, if you remember, this, this food service, it just wasn't working, right, because it was labor costs, it was food costs, and we met, we met monthly until we got the, the labor kind of straightened out, what we thought we could afford. Um, we had some shifts, you know, Whitson's employees to Timberlane, vice versa, um, some food costs, looking to buy locally. And once we got comfortable to, this was like more of our audit meeting once a month with the cafeteria managers to kind of get these numbers to work. So I, we're in pretty good shape. So we had our own, but we obviously we had the outside audit as well um, to take a look at, obviously, making sure that we met regulations. So we're in, we're in pretty good shape with this this company, this this contract, I think, in terms of making it work. That's why I asked the question, and I apologize for asking you without asking you before the meeting about, you know, what's our debt? You yeah. know, what's our, yeah. you know. I feel the, comfortable the with the estimate I shared. I mean, I think it's in that range. Because, you know, that break even, we wanted that, we wanted that to be part of that. So, so thank, thanks, Sue. You're welcome. Jen? Uh, I was just going to motion to make a motion to accept the Whitson's contract. Motion made by Jen. I'll second. A second by Brian. Any other discussion? <coughs> Mad Madam Chair, if I may, I think language um, be to, to renew the contract is what we would be looking for. Is that for. right, Jim? To renew the contract? Oh, yes. Yes. One motion year, correct? We have to do this every year. year. Yeah. Okay. It's each year. We have to come back. Just clarify. Each year. And okay. I'm sure if I may just no. make it clear to the board. No, no. <laughs> make it clear to the board. The contract that you have in front of you is is what the contract really should look like at the end. However, there are additional addenda that may go in anti-lobbying and uh, a, a group of other um, uh, federally regulated addenda that don't terribly impact the contract. I just want to make you aware. Yeah. I think I, I, think I included those. Um, in their practice. The, the addenda are, are in there. Um, I haven't received the official stamp from the state because their final approval is what we would be looking for before the contract is signed. Uh, but that is with all of the language that they asked to be added to the contract. I'm going to call for a vote then. All those in favor of the motion? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Opposed? Zero. Abstaining? One. Thank you. Thank you. And can we have that number, though? The kitchens and stuff. One of the next meetings. The negative account balance. Negative account balance. Oh, we can get. 
I mean, I can get you that I don't tomorrow morning. Uh, well, I'll get it out to the board tomorrow. Okay. Send then, it to the board tomorrow, please. Thank you. Yeah, I'll get it for you, no problem. Thank you, guys. <coughs> um, we just rearranged the agenda here a little bit, so now we're back to group insurance informational. 30 minutes. Amateurized. I would expect it. I would expect it. Good evening, Jeff. Good evening, Madam Chairman. How are you? I'm fine. I received a note, I believe, from you. Um, with some analysis put together by Mr. O'Neill. That's right. So, and in looking at that spreadsheet that was sent over, the, the math worked fine. It was great. I was trying to place the context, and I looked a little further into the email, and I think you mentioned that it was from a an exhibit. It was actually an exhibit that was part of the, the, the Collins Below um, yes. court proceedings. <laughs> And one of the exhibits in there actually had our, it was a statement from Health, uh, Health New Hampshire Trust. Health Trust. Yep. And it was a, I think I'm recalling from memory here, it was like an October, October 8th, 9th, was the snapshot that they gave. Yeah. Exactly, that's the exhibit right there. Uh, October 9th, 2018. Which was, oh, did you want to back there? Yeah, and it had all the different amounts on there, the, the, the enrollees. The cost of the plan, um, and then it was supposed to. In here, it was part of the exhibit was to show the, the 6.5 percent increase that we was the, the GMR number that they provided. So I put all these numbers in here. The number that you come up with is 365 people that are on the um, taking advantage of Jamelin's Health Trust uh, offerings. What was that number? 365 is the number of enrollees as of October 9th, 2018. So, you know, doing all the math coming through there for the current year, the sum of that came up to 8.357 million. It, no, excuse me, that was. Yes, the, the, that, that was mine. Which one is Sean? Yeah, mine's, mine's the front one. Well, depends on what your side is. <laughs> How come the number of enrollees is different? What's going on? Well, well that's, Sean's that's is the, the question. One that Sean's has got no header, and the district says school district on the opposite mm -hmm. side. Correct. Right. So Sean's not discussing his right. side. Is this, so though, the district side, is this the same as what we got in the one of our budgeting? This was in one of our. I think what he just handed you was in one of our budgeting packets. Yes, at some point. right. Come to find out, out, it was in there. I just I, I had not seen it was right. in the, the detail. Yeah, I don't have it. So, is, what I'm asking though, is that the same as this? this? No. Right. Well, I'm not. I'm not sure if what was in your packet it was, was but what was. I believe it was an exhibit. If you look at the bottom of that page, to the actual exhibit, you see how it says page one. Yeah. Of two. two. So two. two wasn't there. But there's the old Paul Harvey rest of the story. The rest of the story <laughs> just is just let me there's if two. I can have some leeway here. Yeah. I, I wanted to just show him what my thing was. So I, I looked all I, at all this stuff and I as I summed it up, it came up to eight point three five seven million in what we're being charged in October 9th of two thousand and eighteen for three hundred and sixty five participants. And then I, you know, then I went, this is gonna be what I would, my view was, is that this is a, a summation of everybody that's in the Timberland District, which are teachers, you know, in, in our Paris, uh, the two different contracts. So I looked at the contracts, the teachers is 85% is paid by the district, and for the TSSU, it varies. Okay. And for that, to make everything simple, I took the upper bound, which is 85%. Some of them are 70, 65, and it depends on what year you're in, in the contract and so forth. But that's being a conservative 85% number. So when you back that out from the 8.357 million for the 365 people that are taking advantage of the health uh, offerings by the district, that comes out to be $7.1 million. And then I said, well, you know, we, we Taking that same numbers and then moving it to the six and a half percent GMR numbers, 
which are the amounts in the other columns, that would show that next year, of the same 365 people that were taking advantage of this health, uh, <coughs> that that same 8.357 million in this current year would be at 8.9 million dollars for the di for the district or the total cost of the insurance, of which the same 85 percent being applied to both uh, all, all people that are taking advantage of it would be 7.565 million. And then I know that we budgeted 10.221 million, so that leaves 2.66, 2.655 million of unknown amount. And I know that that would encompass. This is a group insurance amount. So then I says, all right, that's going to include um, dental. Right. It's going to include uh, people that take the offering for not getting our insurance and you know life term all that all those different kind of so i wanted to, to walk through that because 2.65 million is a lot of money that's you know i can't feel that i comprehend all that you know where, where's all this money going and i just wanted to walk through with the same kind of data set if we had you know the cost for dental is this these are the number of people on it this is just all really boils down to spreadsheet data entry and Analysis, and I just needed to have a discussion that I wanted to feel comfortable with that that 10.221 million that we have is actually a sound number with appropriate surplus because you do want to have that because you know we don't know what all, everybody's going to be right. offering. There's the time periods and people come in and all that stuff. So I wanted to understand that that number that we have and have a discussion about. Yeah. I appreciate the, uh, your interest in it. It actually opens up and allows for broader discussion with the board, with everyone, so that you all, and it's a, it's, it's a major expenditure line. So and, we all and, understand and, what goes into that exactly. exactly. Yeah. And one of the things that, that, that screws, that, that this is like us taking right now, and we're starting out with a zero base budgeting, and we're building it on up. And this is the kind of stuff that I think is really a different kind of view that we should look at as, as a board and also as a district to build it on up to show all this stuff so we can see this versus just taking a number and adding some number to it that we really don't understand or comprehend and just accept it. You know, if I can get in here, I can support a lot of things if I understand the data set that's <coughs> in back of it. So, that's so and, and quite frankly, Sean, I won't, I won't disagree. I found your, um, the spreadsheet that you put together, those numbers, those, those to calculate, calculate as you described, the data was uh, correct. It, it worked. In fact, I liked it so much. I said, let me take those numbers um, attach them to, the, to our plans, and I'll tell you about that in a second, and see where we end up. And that's what you see on the second page. So I'm gonna, I'll distribute this to you. I'll, you. So you have page one anyway, and this is page one and page two. Thank you. So using page one and carrying that out, I think you came up with, and you'll, you'll notice on that page one, if it was included, if it was included as part of that exhibit in mm -hmm. the lawsuit. For the purpose of identifying the fact that we have our, a GMR of 6.5%, it's there. You've done that. It's, that accompl it accomplishes that purpose. Um, but there are, no, there are no sum totals on that page. And you'll note that the top of that page says medical rate exhibit SAU uh, school administrative unit number 55. So what, what Health Trust does is they aggregate um, all, all of our pool, if you will, Hampstead, Timberlane, and um, uh, SAU. We have uh, a healthy pool, I will say, based on our overall size. <coughs> and they provide uh, this statement, this summary of what those benefit packages are going to look like, what those uh, policies are going to look like. And I'm going to go down and look, and I'm going to put people to sleep on this, but the very first policy that you see on page one of one, that BCNE 07L, that's a Hampstead-only policy. BCNE 20, Timberlane. BCNE 20... Uh, the second one is uh, SAU only. BC 3T 5R, et cetera, Hampstead. Next policy, B3 T10, um, uh, SAU and Hampstead. Um, so you can tell that not all of these are Timberlane. Right. On the second page, uh, the two Timberlane policies are, I guess, one, two, three. It's the fourth one down. It's the AB20. 07L dash RX 10, 20, 45, 3KL. And the one below that is uh, both a Hampstead and Timberlane 
participating policy. That's ABSOS 2041KED. And then we have some uh, Medicomp plans below that. The first one's MC307, that's Hampstead. Then we have Timberland. Then we have a Hampstead and Timberland split. So, so in calculating just based on the first page, we're including some Hampstead policies in there and we're not picking up the, the Timberland policies on the second page. So what I did was I, I took, I liked your rationale, Sean, I, I took it and I just said, let me, let me take out those Hampstead only policies. Let me in, in, include just those Timberland policies um, with our numbers. So you'll see that, that the list that I have doesn't exactly match the list that you have because I didn't want to print this whole thing out with half of it, more than half of it being irrelevant because it's Hampstead only. Um, and putting those together and, and uh, Sean, using the formula that you, you know, that you put together, um, I thought that it was uh, sound. I said, let me just, let me just carry out what you've started here. Let me just you know, finalize it and wrap it up. Um, you'll see that when we include all of our policies, we're looking at a, uh, let's say, an 1819 total cost of 10 million 460, uh, 1920 projected, 11 million 140 total. Applying the same types of formulas that you had, which I, you know, are approximately uh, not out of the ballpark. I come up with a current year TRSD expense of 8.819, million, I'm sorry, and uh, uh, a 1920 of 9,469,000. I, I've updated your, like you had some average, yearly average um, uh, cost per uh, participant or per person to the district. And then I said, well, and let me include, because I'd like to have this discussion. I'm glad that we're having the discussion. Let me take all of that and let me just summarize it. And that's where you see the all categories at the bottom. So you'll see we have our health, we have our, our yearly cost, the TRSD portion for 1819, the anticipated cost for 1920, which is that, again, that 11140 and then the uh, uh, TRSD only cost of 9469 uh, The same thing with dental. You can take a look at, at what that looks like. About uh, over half a million in the current year, 546,000 in dental. Total cost, our obligation, 396,719. In 1920, 582,000. Uh, total cost, our obligation, 423,000. Life, uh, long term disability, short term disability, and buyout amounts are included. So when we look at the total health and health related costs, um, including dental and, and all the other plans, it comes out to 9978000 uh, Again, the budget at 10221000 gives us a delta of about 243000 Our total exposure, from a technical perspective, um, beyond what our obligations are that are stated as these potential um, projected budget numbers, is about $3 million. But that's assuming full participation, full plan, the whole boat, all of our obligations. If somewhere to max, if all of our employees were to max out their maximum benefit, um, I think it's reasonable based on what we have for a run rate, based on what's reasonable um, for plan adjustments. Even if we were to go with an average plan <coughs> participant cost of let's say twenty thousand uh, dollars, two hundred and forty-three thousand gives you know enough room to uh, to cover some shifts in plans, meaning somebody might go from single to a family, uh, and it also covers uh, perhaps a new employee who who was coming on with a family plan for uh, an employee who left perhaps having none. Uh, that, that gives us just a little bit of room to be able to absorb some of those changes. I think that I had probably had a higher number in there to begin with. It's probably not the number that I'd like to um, be with because the exposure can be so great. We do have the obligations. Um, you know, that's, that's what it is. So I figure we have a little bit of a buffer in there. Questions. This is an informational um, evening um, topic that Sean requested. So, Sheila, I'm just curious. Did we get the actual rates for this year yet? They're supposed to come in March, correct? Correct. Yeah, the, I know. the actual rate hike. Yeah, the actual rate in place yet. No, right. it hasn't come yet. No, it hasn't come yet. Which is which is t which is t not untypical. We, we normally wouldn't have it quite this early. Okay. So, Brian, and then Lee. Okay. Um, I was just looking at our, uh, yes, our other handout, our annual report, okay? Which 100 I'm, copies upstairs, and I didn't bring one down, so. Of course. Well, on, on page 40, it, it, uh, yeah, goes, it goes into the, uh, just, you know, 
2100-210 line, which is group insurance. So last year we actually spent just under 8.8 .8 million, 8792. Okay, so um, that was the actual expended line. Yep. Okay. Then I go over to the proposed budget line. Um, shows me 10240. Right? Mm -hmm. well, yeah, well, that's. Skip an that, so yeah. This is expended 17.18. Yeah, yeah, last year we actually spent, you know, for the year end, you know, last year we spent it, just we'll call it round up 8.8 .8 million. So now, you're going to now we're going with the budgets that the people are going to see Tuesday, mm -hmm. right? Two years. Two years, yeah. So skip in there. No, no, I understand. Okay, but, I'm right. but I'm just looking at the 10.240, and I'm just curious why this piece of paper shows 10.220. That was the number uh, I think Sean had included in his analysis. Well, I thought this sheet was yours. I thought the I thought the second. I, the, I, I, I took what Sean had on the front, and for comparative purposes, just plugged in the correct plans based okay. on. I believe that we probably no, had. No, 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 no. The ten two two one is the number that's in the default budget. The ten two four zero is the number in the proposed budget. Okay. That's the difference there. Thank okay. you. Yeah, 10221 yeah. is the default number. Yeah. Okay, nice. Okay, but so it's not, not, I was just, just literally reading it says default and operating budget, so I thought. And just so we have a little more comparison here. Okay. That's the the right. percentage increase from 1718 to 1819, what is what was the GMR for this current year? Well, this is in the 5% range, I believe. So that that year from 18, 1718 to 1890, May tight, 19. We increased 7.2 percent over our actual spend, and the increase from 1819 to 1920, when I just do a straight calculation, is an 8.6 increase, 8.6 mm -hmm. percent increase. So you got a That's what we're number. estimating an 8.6 percent increase. I guess, but my I guess my conclusion, unless I was misunderstanding what your your analysis was just showing, Sean, that we already spent. 8.8 .8 million. Right, in 17.8. Um, That's what we actually spent for the for the year ending June 30, 2018. So, at at the the current enrollment that I because I I thought that that number represented what Timberland's was cost was. That's apparently. It, is it's a hybrid <laughs> of Timberlane and Hampstead, and, and there's other policies that were on there, so according right, to yeah. this other sheet. Yeah. I get, well, I guess my point is that, I mean, I get it that budgets are <coughs> budgets, budgets, but the actual expenditure last year was $8.8 right. million, so it's got to be higher. It'll be at least it, 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 more. Well, it's going to be higher. It'll be yeah. higher. But, but I, I, I did – see, what I had is a delta of the, the $2.6 million. Yep. And I knew that that included other items, but I, I didn't know what those other items are. I could take a guess and knowing that it was going to be dental, you know, life insurance, short-term disability, all those other benefits. And to calculate that, to get a true representation of that, one is we're going to have to know the number of enrollees in those programs and the cost of those programs. And then you would add it to – the spreadsheet and then build it up sort of I mean what Jeff had done here and bringing in the other items because it seems like you know life is a um, I'm assuming that's just a flat term policy that we buy for the covers the blanket correct yeah for a dollar amount yeah. well, I'm, I agree I'm just saying that if you project that out two years that's probably pretty close yeah. <clears throat> The no, 10 that, million. Was, that was the spirit of Sean's question because he had a he had a document that was kind of misleading and got him to a bad number and you have, mm. right. Well, I, there was a big gap in there of the yeah. two point six million, and I'm like, I know it included other stuff, but let's build it up and mm -hmm. so we can get closer to, you know, what we have now that I have these these numbers. So, so I mean, we were off roughly one hundred thirty just enrollees. Right. But but you knew that those other that other stuff wasn't going to end up being two point six five million. I was looking to see to yeah. justify it. I mean, more, yeah. until I got a number of 495, I believe that 365 was the true number. Mm. Yeah. Well, we I mean, this is the documentation that we had. And I have to tell you, I, I, I appreciate the discussion. And I hope the board is, you know, everyone here has a, a better understanding as to, as to what, the, you know, what types of coverage go into that line item. 
how but much narrow the basis of it is. Going back to my original comments on this is about the whole building this on up. Once you build this on up and you show it on here, just the following year, it's just really just, you know, plug and chug. Just, I mean, once you do this, fill it in, you got all the information right there. That line item comes there, nobody's going to dispute these kind of numbers because mm -hmm. you have data that supports it. Coming in and just saying GMR is this and we have this number of people and it's this number amount, okay. Uh, just because you say so, okay. That's fair. <laughs> so uh, that's what it is. Trust but verify. This is going to show the verification aspect. Yeah. And I do, I do a little bit more um, behind the scenes in terms of looking at, at what our participation is and how much how much buffer we're going to need um, in that. And uh, you know, certainly this is the this is the the level of detail that should be um, should, if you guys want it made available. When you give the data on here, at least I want to speak for myself, is that I I mean th this buffer is is, is sound. It's, it's not an exorbitant amount. It's not a, a, a low amount. Mm -hmm. But I feel better now I that I can minutes. I can ascertain I that number and come yeah. to it. Oh, everyone does. Yeah. Before tonight, I was just like, well, i, I got to take them at their word. But you know what? I have no way of verifying yeah. it. You build up confidence, and you build up confidence with the community when you can preside stuff like this. You put this out on the document, out on the, out on the, on the public where they can scrutinize it as well, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to argue with this I stuff and watching it t on TV that I'm sure would like that spreadsheet Sean no and they they will <laughs> I mean but I'll defend it you know I know I'm a critic with Sean on those spreadsheets he likes he likes that data I do too so does Kim yes Sheila and then Earl. I'm just really curious um, I really thought the buyout number would be larger yeah, you mean number of people that take the buyout the act, yeah, the number of people who take in the buyout in the actual, that physical number, I thought it would be larger because I'm trying to think, you know, employees, who's this, you know, the number we have here, kind of do the math, because we have about 700 odd, correct? I'll be, I'll be fair, the buyout is not, it, it's not an incentive to... If well, let, let's just say if, if a couple, if one of the if a couple, and one of them l worked here, right, they're more likely to take the insurance here. Our insurance is better probably than what somebody else would be offering. I understand that, but let's say I don't take the insurance and I work as a t as a professional, hmm? and I don't take the insurance because my husband's insurance is better. Yep. The buyout's just not significant enough to drive that fifty-four thousand dollar up. It's not a it's not a big it's not a big incentive to not take the insurance. Okay. It's a small amount of money. I understand that, that, but I'm thinking. Uh, I don't want to. No, yeah, but what's the number? It varies. It know. varies. Okay, that's what I was trying to figure out because I, you know, looking at the contract, it's it didn't compute. Yeah. It's not thousands. No. Right. No, yeah. I re understand that. Yeah, no, I, I just the, okay. range, the range doesn't go from yeah. It's, okay. Earl, your turn. Then Lee. Then Jen. I think uh, to Sean's point too, in terms of, and I and I had sent sent Sean some information today because I, I I was trying to figure out where your numbers and they weren't, and I was like I thought that the delta would be in that three to four hundred thousand dollar range, and it was bigger than that. So I don't want people to think it wasn't bigger than that in the past. But the reason it was bigger than that, and you know, it, it was the open positions <coughs> that may have had insurance budgeted for them, right? In the past, and so that that delta might have been bigger in the in past years. I think we've gotten that closer, and I think part of trying to come in with a flat budget this year, and Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, Mr. Dowd, uh, this was one of the areas where I said reduce insurance, reduce insurance, you know, to try to make the numbers work. That that was for the budget committee, mm -hmm. um, which I think you're, if I'm if I'm hearing what you're, Mr. O'Neill's saying correctly, we're, we're comfortable kind of where this, this delta is a comfortable delta to have in the insurance line. Is that fair to say? I haven't had a chance to fully ascertain everything on here. I mean, it's looking that it's you, for the numbers that he's presenting on here. The, the delta is 243k. That, to me personally, is is a sound amount. But I want to go through all the all this stuff, and and I'm going to assume that it's all correct. Yeah, and that was that wasn't the only reason. But one of the reasons I sent you the staffing kind of update today to say like, are we if we had open positions, and those people would have required insurance. But I'm not recommending filling any of those open positions. So. That's where we got the delta. This delta is actually lower than I thought it would be when he started crushing these numbers. Because what I sent to you, I thought it was going to be in the four or five hundred thousand dollar range. So, if we're comfortable with that number, once you've analyzed them, I, I think we're in a pretty good spot. And I agree, moving this forward, you know, moving all these numbers forward to next year, we might be in a um, 
a more trusting honest, spot. It, it, once you put the, the the initial time in developing this 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 these detailed processes, that they'll just it's a pipeline. Every year you just sort of fill in the new data, come and it just flows through there, and you got all the data right here. I mean, it's it, it's going to be hard to to dispute some of these numbers when you're looking right at it. Mm -hmm. I agree. But it's the the, the transparency, the, the observability of, of this data. Any mm -hmm. comment, question, then to John? Yeah, just a, a question. I'm going to show some, some ignorance here, but in the <coughs> corporate environment, we can shop around our health care providers, mm -hmm. right? It's a two-part question. Are, are we able to shop around our insurance providers and uh, negotiate the terms with them? And if so, have we looked at increasing the buyout payment in order to reduce the premiums? I can speak to that because this goes back a little bit further than, than your, your time, time here. Um, I believe there's only two places in New Hampshire, correct? I think so. It's Health Trust and it's, kind of a, it's a little bit of a closed shop. There's only two places to go. Another the rates, company. The yeah, rates yeah, are yeah, very yeah. similar. And um, what we've done in the past is we, we, we increased, and then it was almost like a giveaway because the people that weren't taking the insurance – just got a bigger buyout, and it didn't increase the number of people that were taking the buyout. So I don't, I don't know where that, you know, what's the magic number which gets more people to take the buyout and less people to take insurance. But that was the risk, and this was back to Mr. Stokinger's days. He goes, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're giving money away to people that are already taking the buyout, and you're not getting any more people. It didn't even cover what we tried to do. It didn't even cover the, the increase, right. I guess is what I'm saying. So it was a, it was a negative for us. Yeah, it's just a tactic I've used to try to get that premium down. You you dangle that carrot, right? And they go for the other insurance option because the the buyout amount is different, and then you, you have a lower premium. Jen. I just want to comment on that. I think in the corporate world, too, you don't usually see um, employee, employers covering 85%. No. And so I think that's why you get more people taking the buyout because it mm – -hmm. Yeah, the, the employee <laughs> contribution is so much higher. Thirty percent. Yeah. You know, thirty, thirty five percent right yep. now. <clears throat> All right. Anything else that's uh, apropos? We've we've spent a given a good half hour. Sean, are you No, I'm, I'm back, back with I'm, back I'm with glad with to see this kind of data <laughs> asking you should be given money. <coughs> yes. There you are. So. On the screen, and I'm very, I'm very pleased that with the um, projection that we have, I can actually put that up on the, the old one. We couldn't. So, <laughs> Thank anything you. else on this? Kim? Just one thing. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out why we're down 15 staff, but we're up 8.6 percent on our estimation for next year. Just, I don't so, expect an answer, but. Your 8.6% 8, 8. was over? Over 18, 19 budget. Over 18, 19 budget. And you're down 15 staff. Yep. And it's, it's based on what we had for participation in those, in those plans. Okay. So. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank moving you for your on, interest. Moving on to administrator's report, then. Oh, thank you. I um, have quite, quite a bit uh, for you tonight. I, in, in your packets, I don't know if you had a chance to look at them. Um, you have executive summaries on the, on the following items. Um, you have an executive summary on the middle school gym floor, update on repair work as it relates to the roof. Um, today, uh, we, we got some issues around the Timberlane campus uh, traffic issues. Um, Jen had sent us some, and I asked Mr. Gary, he did some research on that, so you have an executive summary on that in there. Um, we had some questions about ROTC uh, program options, so that's in there. Um, and a wrestling program update relative to the challenges this year. Right. On the topic of wrestling, wrestling team will be hanging their 27th championship banner in the gym. Uh, they had an undefeated season again this year at 19-0. and 0. Uh, The 2019 division state champions and the 2019 state uh, meet of champions champions. They crowned six individual state champions and ten all-state medalists. They have 172 wins in a row in New Hampshire dual meet competition dating back to 2007, unbeaten in state duels for 11 straight years. I'd like to congratulate our wrestling team, great coaches. Uh, senior Connor McGonigal won his fourth straight New Hampshire state championship and his third straight New England championship. Upon winning his third New England title, he was immediately inducted into the New England Wrestling Hall of Fame for this accomplishment. 
Connor broke the school record for career wins, finishing the high school record with a, uh, his career with a record of 197 and seven. Uh, Connor found out this week that he's been selected to participate in the 22nd uh, Dream Team Classic. This is a prestigious annual event that's held in Chicago. He's been selected for Team USA, and that will duel Team Illinois on Saturday, April 6th in Chicago. <laughs> he's earned Division I scholarship to wrestle next year at Lehigh University. I'd like to congratulate Connor, both on a personal level for all these accomplishments, as well as representing Timberlane so well in this sport. Um, Incredible season, incredible group of kids, incredible group of coaches. Um, so congratulations uh, to them, Coach Julden and, and, and that whole crowd. They did a, a fantastic job. Uh, transportation contract as requested by board members. That's also uh, there. And I believe you also have uh, the treasurer's report. So I think um, as far as executive summaries, I don't know how much time you've had to look at them. If, you, if there were questions or anything, if we could wait to the end of this and then maybe get back to that. Or... Um, I'm not sure how many of us have had much of a time to really look at these things. If you want to take these things home and, and either send your questions ahead for next time and work it into the administrative report next time to get those questions answered, I wouldn't make it an agenda item. I'd put it in the administrative. If it were me planning the agenda, I'd put it in the administrative section. I just wanted to ask a question about the um, ROTC program in Salem. So it's... Um, Halfway through, Salem offers one year-long course each year, and they would travel with the CTE. So are they uh, going to Salem just for one class? Well, if we, if we could do this so I could research this properly, because uh, I don't want to give you the wrong answer. So just re go through that stuff, and then just send. You, you can send the questions directly to me, or you can go through the chat. Oh, if you want to do that, and I can either get them back to you individually, or we can bring them back as part of. I was of just curious if you knew how this, what that schedule will look like. So I, if I it think it depends. Okay. That's why I'm, I'm, I don't want to answer. You know, we when I first came, we, we we've been trying to. We'd love to have an RTC program here, but they they're just not funding RTC programs <coughs> in every school. So, um, you know, we'd love to get one, and we we've, we've asked a number just of times. Okay. I actually met with um, Mr. Sedman at uh, Pinkerton even to try to to see what we could do Fine. there, but Colonel. Um, so if we could just do that, I know you haven't had a chance to just read them, and you can send the questions to me, and I'll research them and get the answers to you. Uh, I'll copy everybody on the board because you might have the same question. Can we do that? Send your questions directly to Earl, and then uh, he'll copy all of us, or you can copy all of us if you wish. Um, don't you don't need to go through me and then we send it on. I, I'm sorry. I, I I just need to comment on that. So we're now changing the protocol. We are not okay. being Send required to go to through me. the chair. That's fine. I think Send them we should be going through the chair. Thank Send you. them directly to me, and I'll forward them along. Do you want? Do you want? When Send I get the question from Sue, me. does everybody want to see the answer? Of course. Yeah. Yes. An email. Okay. Forward it. <laughs> well, no, that's what I'm saying. I'll just. Yeah. I'll just. Type they don't want to look at it. it. They don't look at it. Okay. okay. That's fine. That's what I mean. For informational purposes, that that works. Second thing, donations. The district is in receipt of two donations. First, uh, Timberlane Regional Middle School was awarded a U.S. lacrosse soft stick grant that supplies 30 sticks and 30 balls to be used as part of the physical education curriculum. The equipment valued at approximately $450 uh, will help develop skills directly tied to the middle school PE competencies as well as promote a sport that is rising in popularity in our district and across the state. Uh, the middle school administration, athletic director Angelo Fantasia, and director of secondary curriculum Mark Pedersen will properly train and work with middle school PE teachers to make this equipment implementation a success. Um, I accepted this donation on behalf of the district as it is valued less than $500. Uh, Danville Elementary is in receipt of a donation of elementary Spanish instructional supplies donated by a former teacher. These materials are in great shape and are most welcomed. Those are also valued at less than $500, so um, we accepted those on behalf of the district. We also are in receipt of an anonymous $2,000 donation for use at the superintendent's discretion. Um, I've designated this money to be used as scholarships towards the annual April STEAM camp. Uh, per policy KCD, this donation will require an action from the board, and it is, is it over $500. I'll make a motion to accept that donation. We make some motion. Can I I'll a second. second? Sarah makes a second. All those in favor? Looks like unanimous. Thank you, and I think that'll be great zero. for our our, um, our, our, our our scholarships for that. Uh, we, we have two students. With gratitude. Oh. With gratitude. Gratitude to the yes. uh, owner. It was. 
Um, student trips. We have two trips. Um, they, they came in and made presentations, uh, SLT. Uh, one is to Spain, Portugal, and that's in April of 2020. Trip details are in board packets to, for uh, a request to allow students to participate in this trip from April 24th to May 3rd, uh, 2020. Itinerary includes visits to Granada, Seville, and Lisbon. Uh, students would need to be excused from class on one day. That is April 24th, and board action is required. I'd like to make the motion to allow them to take the day and go on the trip. I don't know how you want to say it. Perfect. Second. I'll second. Sarah will second to waive the waive the day and approve the trip. All those in favor? Wait, thank you. Just to be clear, is that for both of them? No. No, that's this just is the second the trip is um, for France, and that's uh -oh. in April of 2020 as well. Trip details are in board packets to allow students to participate in this trip from April 23rd through May 3rd. Uh, the itinerary includes visits to Paris, Avignon, Arles, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, the French Riviera. Students will need to be excused from class on April 23rd and April 24th, and that also requires board action. I'll make a motion. Mr. O'Neill makes a motion to waive the day. I'll second it. Two days. Two days, right? Two days. Excuse me. Excuse me. Two days. <coughs> Second by Sarah. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, we've had several, several inquiries um, about a gymnastics program at both our middle school and, our, and, and hopefully our high school. Uh, my understanding is at this time we've had significant interest at our middle school and we're trying to figure out the high school um, piece of that and then how we would budget that and how we would go forward. So that's... Um, I'm looking for an update on that real soon as to f how we're going to execute that. But, um, like I said, there's been uh, tremendous interest at the middle school, which is great. Uh, so we'd like to build out that gymnastics program here, which is, has been something we haven't had. Um, one thing I was, gonna, I was looking for some feedback. Um, we, we've talked about this um, over the years here. And um, this came up as part of uh, Naviance and actually another company called My Options because one of the things they do is they track um, community service hours on, on these two systems. We currently use Naviance. My Options is a... Um, is a, a free option right now, uh, and so we're, we're taking a look at that as well. Um, but we're looking at community service as potentially a graduation requirement, and I, w I just wanted to kind of get a pulse from the board how you felt is that something uh, we want to pursue and look to do. Um, it is something I, I did in my previous district right before I left. We implemented it, and, and uh, um, it is something, you know, with National Honor Society and some of the other, I'm sorry, Jen, and some of the other um, programs that kids have to do community service, but looking at it as a community service, as a graduation requirement, and then there's a lot that has to go into what that means and looks like and how we track it and what do we do for yeah. kids and how do we get, how do we not make sure that this doesn't keep people from graduating, but it actually helps um, uh, with the community involvement and those sorts of things. So I was just curious if we could, if you chair would open the floor if you wanted to have that, or if it's something you'd rather discuss at a future meeting. What's the failing of the board future meeting on now? I just want to ask one quick question on if I could. So you're going to ask a question. Question. Go ahead. When you talk about um, community service as a graduation requirement, would it be in addition to the community service that many students are already doing? Or would it count? Would that would what they're already doing? We, if there would be a, a certain number of hours mm -hmm. per student to graduate, and so if they met those hours because they were in the National Honor Society or because they were in some other program, mm -hmm. they would meet that. They would already met that requirement. Okay. Typically, those students you don't have to worry about. It, uh, it's usually about less than ten percent because everybody has the what are you going to do, and that that really gets down to the high school principal and staff there. Um, you know, students can be assigned things to help them get the hours that they need. Um, what's the magic number of hours? That's a, that's a big question. Um, is it something over four years? Is it something as a senior project? Those are other options you talk about. Is this just in their senior year? Or is it something you'd like to see them do a little bit each year? Um, so there's, there's a lot that could go into this discussion about what, what is it going to look like in Timberlane mm -hmm. if that's something that the board uh, wants to entertain. I'm happy to have a discussion at a later date then. Jen is recommending that we do it at a later date, put it as an agenda item, or you could put it part of the administrative report. Is that all right with everybody? I think that yeah. it's um, I think it's really details. Yeah. yeah, we need more details. <clears throat> the details, yeah. but overall, I'm, I'm pretty I'm, supportive I'm of it. Right. Yeah. Um, schools that do it, mm -hmm. they have a, a protocol they use. 
Mm -hmm. So it's interesting what they do allow. It'll be interesting to see what other schools in the area. Be an opportunity do. for yeah. Dr. Metzler to put together some packages of different what different sure. people do yeah. in different areas. And yeah, so if it's the will of the board to hey bring us some information to yes. see what this yes. might yes. look like, yes. Yes. yes, and then we can kick and punch it and make it look like what Timberlane, and then see kind of where we're at. We can do a TPAF on it and some things and get mm -hmm. some public uh, mm. some public feedback too, yeah. which would be good. All right, great. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, I do have an, a, a staff update that, that I'd have to do that in non-public. So if we're going to have a non-public later, it's just I need to update you on a particular situation that I can't do publicly. Okay. That's Anything the end else? of the. Um, okay, other announcements? Nope. Oh, are we making that announcement? I don't know. Is it, is I, don't, it something I don't have officially. Well, can I make it? Sure. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm proud to um, announce that we uh, we've had uh, uh, one of our staff members um, has been um, honored as the nurse of the year. So. If you want, would you like to do the honors? So um, <laughs> the New Hampshire School Nurses Association pick a person from the state of New Hampshire every year, and this year they've chosen Kathleen Sherman DeRoche as the nurse of the year. Good for Yay. her. Good for she her. She was very excited. It was quite a quite a whole long process they went through, and she was surprised when they announced it today. They called her and said that she was expected to, you know, uh, wear the tiara the whole year <laughs> and uh, the sash. And, you know, um, she asked for a magic wand. I don't know if that's something in the budget, but um, she was thrilled to be on it because she's being on it by other nurses in the, in the state. So Absolutely. congratulations awesome. to Nurse Kate, and I know that Paula's School is very proud of her. So. Congratulations and to her. Awesome. Well, pretty proud Congratulations. Of her. Yeah. Yeah, great. So maybe perhaps we could have her at a, a future meeting. It, um, one of the in, in our in our work, um, whether you're a principal or superintendent, it's the one position that you don't question. You don't question the nurses. Mm. You do what the nurses tell you. And uh, she's just been great. She's a leader um, of all of our nurses and certainly does a, a fantastic job. We're very proud of her, and I'm certainly happy that she's being recognized for her work. Uh, one other staffing issue. Um, we've had staff that's out, so we have one of our principal that's been out for for quite some time. So we've had some shifting to try to, to cover the holes. So um, I'm moving one of the assistant principals from Danville temporarily to help out in Danville. Um, currently, I had a, a district level administrator there that was previously there as an administrator, but um, she needs to get back to her work. So we're gonna we're gonna move one of the assistants there, um, and then Dan Woodworth is going to go down to Pollard and help out down at Pollard in the in the meantime. So we're moving some people around to try to fill uh, the void, um, and 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 hopefully, um, you know, we're. Our thoughts and prayers. We we, we hope she gets um, her back to good health soon. All right. uh, so that's All just right. a, one. That's a, and the other thing is obviously a staffing update. I mean, uh, one staffing update I have to do uh, privately. So no personnel report other than I don't have a personnel. No, no, no personnel report. Um, committee reports. Anyone have a committee report? We did not have. A, I'll start. We did not have curriculum and assessment. Usually once a, a year we don't have a meeting. This is the only month we didn't meet. Uh, we had nothing really that was pressing on the agenda, and it'll <coughs> ramp up again. Um, so we, we canceled for the for the month. Um, I think that's it. I did go to the selectmen in Plasto and <coughs> gave, gave our, our um, very quick, here it is. Um, they didn't ask many questions. They were thankful we were there. I think that's all I have, Brian. Uh, I don't have any committee reports, but uh, Jen and I Monday night went to the Atkinson Selectman, and um, we actually had a pretty, good, pretty good exchange on every single Warren article. So um, I, they put us on the agenda, I think, for ten minutes, and an hour later we walked oh, out of the building. Wow. So, and they invited us back. So we, I guess, they liked us. I'll wait for the invitation. <laughs> <I'll wait> for <laughs> <laughs> was, was Mr. Garrity there? No, Mr. Garrett was not there, but I did <laughs> compliment him because uh, about one of his, uh, we helped out the whole group on an article, deliberative. I let the world know that. Um, but anyhow, so we're not Good. going to propose a school right now. We're just doing that. Correct? Do anything you want. Okay. Well, um, I went uh, last night. Uh, I was at the Hood School. Um, there's an organization that I was there uh, with my grandkids, um, and there's a organization, the New Hampshire PTA Association. And uh, when I was sitting there, um, as, as a proud grandfather, there was, I'm, I'm happy to tell you, there was about a dozen awards uh, received by Danville students. And you know, it's all about literature, art, music, and uh, it was people from, PTAs from all over the state. And I would have to say that uh, Danville pretty much uh, 
got quite a fair share of its awards. Good, great. Right. They have a really active PTA. No, they, they, they did a good job. Kim McCormick. Kim McCormick. Well, yep. Mm -hmm. They did a, there last night. They were very well represented, and they did it. Those students did a good job. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Excellent. Do well in so Jim, something? Yeah. Um, policy committee met tonight. We, um, that committee is really, we've been churning through a lot of policies, making some great headway. So I'd like to just thank everybody on that policy and on that committee. And um, hopefully we can keep up the pace, get an update soon from New Hampshire School Board, where we're at in the queue. I expect probably within the month. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to them soon. Um, like I said, we didn't, the curriculum assessment didn't meet this month. Um, the, this month is Music in Our Schools Month, and last night I attended the jazz band concert, and it was the middle school and the high school. Mm -hmm. Um, there's going to be, it was, as always, awesome, because the, it was just so much fun to see the jazz combo, which is a small group of high school students, and then the middle school, and the middle school jazz band is huge which is so exciting, the talent that's coming up from the middle school into the high school music program. And then the high school jazz band um, did really well also. And then the next concerts throughout the month, what's great about this month is they mix the middle school with the high school, so you get to see, you know, you'll watch the eighth grade orchestra and then you'll watch the high school orchestra. You'll watch, you know, see, or the the middle school band and then the high school band. So you get to see the transition and kind of remind yourself on, you know, if you're a high school parent, oh, that's where they were and look how far they've come. But it also shows the middle school kids what they have to look forward to if they stick with it through high school. So it's just a great month and there's just a ton of stuff going on in the pack in, in March for Music in Our Schools Month. So share the, I think it's appropriate to share. Share. Do you want... The, the names or just oh, no no the other the thing we're talking about the celebration piece oh the, yeah 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 okay so um, I had a uh, community member reach out to me yesterday and she mentioned a fine that there are schools going on uh, across the United States that are doing this fine arts signing day and they basically it celebrates students who are going through seniors who are going through the uh, application process for art schools, music schools, theater programs, all that stuff, they have to go through a, a very arduous audition and presentation process. So what they do is at the end of April, they have a signing celebration where the kids announce where they've committed to go and the parents are involved. And um, after talking with Dr. Metzler and Mr. Woodworth, we're going to be moving that forward at Timberlane. So we're going to be working together to really celebrate the accomplishments of our fine arts students, not just music theory, but our, our those kids across the district that are committed to um, colleges and, and their futures in the arts, which is just, it's just so exciting because Timberlane has always supported the arts since day one, and to finally have this is just something I'm really proud to be um, able to share. Yeah, Mr. C. And Mr. And C. Mr. And Mr. D. Behind this, so yeah. I, I think it's going to be awesome. It's just going to be so much fun. It's going to be great. I'm really excited. It's yeah. like the athletic signing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but for fine arts. It's similar to the yeah. athletic yeah. signing that we have. Which yeah, yeah. Have so these kids are going to be um, honored. And, and, and the parents will be there, and, it's, and they'll be able to wear the, you know, the sweatshirts or caps or whatever the schools that they sign with. So it's great. It's really exciting. I don't have a committee report, but um, I would like to say tonight before I came here, I was at the um, Timberlane High School Winter Track Banquet, which was a fun event for all. Um, just low-key, but very nicely done. The coaches had a lot of nice things to say, talked about how great a season was and how great a group of kids it was. Um, they didn't have the most successful season, but every every kid that participated seemed to work on their personal best and get better throughout the year, and the coaches just said it was a great Great team to be a part of, um, so kudos to the winter track team. Um, and I would like to spin off um, with what Dr. Metzler was talking about was the, um, the grant at the middle school on lacrosse. Um, lacrosse is one of my passions, and we have a captain of the high school lacrosse team sitting across from us with um, Nick Valhuli. So um, I did want to thank um, Mr. Peterson and also Jen Marston, who is a community member um, who is big on the youth lacrosse 
Um, she, she pushes lacrosse at the youth level, the high school level, anywhere she can um, for bringing that grant forward. Um, I think it's great to get that into the middle school. I know Atkinson has already had lacrosse in their curriculum. Um, it would be nice to see it go into the other elementary schools. U.S. Lacrosse has been a great organization for supporting, um, so it would be nice if we could spread that across and expand that. It is such a, in my mind, it's a great sport, and, it's, and it is one of the fastest growing sports. So um, just want to thank both of them again for pursuing that and bringing that, because I think it's a great way to continue to educate um, the athletes in that. And spinning off of that, as I see in one of the reports again, um, spring tryouts are coming up, and I just wanted to wish everyone good luck that is trying out for a team and, and for a good season for everyone for the spring going, going forward. Nice way to end the year. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you, Krista. Sheila? Lee and I went to the school, to the BOS last Monday. Went, talked about all the Warren articles, discussed a few things, and... It was a nice visit. Yeah, it's good. Good, good. So we got that covered. Yep. Um, nothing major from me. Just to echo what uh, Jen said. Policy committee's really been chugging along. Everyone's saddled up, grabbed, a, grabbed the reins, and we're marching forward to getting some good work done. Good. Excellent. That's a good way to wrap our year up. Yeah. Sean. No, I don't know anything. Thanks again for the spreadsheet work, yeah. your analysis. Yeah. Part of the continued effort. Kim. I'm all set, thanks. <laughs> She's been all set. She's so sick. I think I you, you, probably, you probably have what I had, I think. That's right. Feel. Maybe we're going to keep the little mask on. Uh, anything else from the board? Can I have a selfish little plug for a minute? Sure. Kristen's great talk about lacrosse. Um, I don't know how many parents, students realize that uh, Timberlane does not have a youth girls program. A lot of the youth girls do play in Hampstead, and I think this year that upper age group, I think half of the Hampstead team is going to be um, represented by Timberlane players. So that girls program is um, really growing. So any younger girls looking to play, mm -hmm. Hampstead will take them <clears throat> if they enjoy that curriculum. And we'll school with lacrosse. So want to get them to play. That's yep. the important thing. That's how Brian and I felt about softball when we did it. We just want them to have an opportunity to play. Mm -hmm. right? Any place you can play, play and enjoy it. Uh, I do want to put in plug in for the run of the savages. Um, Kristen spoke eloquently about it last time, but it's worth saying again that's on the 13th of April. <clears throat> if you're interested out there in the community to participate, you can uh, reach out to Kristen or reach out to Paul at school, and they'll help you get get set up, great sweatshirts, it's a really good time, it's a really good community feel and <coughs> understanding how Kristen and I both feel about Dana-Faber and the Jimmy Fund, um, it's worth worth your time and effort to participate in that. So correspondence see, folder, we've gotten yeah. correspondence, there's some other stuff with in here from, about that has to do with correspondence, uh, vendor and payroll, is that going around? It's over here. Uh, all right, can that come back around because I didn't get a chance to see that at all. Um, mm -hmm. Other other business? Yes, correct. Um, I just, uh, I guess it's a, a clarification here. Um, glad that Superintendent is joining us here tonight. Um, apparently, there was some confusion over 24 to about a 24 to 48 hour window about a, a petitioned warrant article. Um, and uh, I'm not a Facebook guy, so I really don't know what happened on Facebook, quite frankly. Um, so I reached out to um, Attorney O'Shaughnessy. So, as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, unless you know anything different, there is no, on, on the essay withdrawal petition, um, we, we have an, an opinion here from Attorney O'Shaughnessy that we're all set now. That's my understanding as we speak. You know, the, the, um, just the timing of this, I don't know if everybody knows the timing. So, late last week, um, and, I, and I called him and said, like, what, what do we do? You didn't inform the board about this particular thing. He goes, oh, I got it. Don't worry about it. Let me research it. I'll send you something. We got something Monday. I got that to Sue and Brian. And then by Wednesday, we got something else. So I, I don't really know, you know, the RSAs. And I rely on the attorneys to tell us what to advise you to what we're supposed to do. My understanding is what Brian just said. My understanding is where it's, it's all set yep. as we speak. But it just seems like 
within 72 hours we get two two different opinions. Yeah. I and I spoke for the board and corresponded with the petitioner, the lead Good. petitioner, and said everything's <coughs> fine. Did you? Good. Thank you. Yes, I did. Um, and um, I haven't heard back from her, but um, thank you. you. Know, she would probably send me back something, just acknowledging that she got my email, so that we're all set. It's on the warrant as is and ready to roll. With that, I'd like to actually make a motion to release from the attorney-client privileges and to make it publicly available the actual information from Mr. Uh, our district attorney, Mr. O'Shaughnessy. This well, the second, the second, second one, right? Both opinions. The Both opinions. Both, Both opinions. opinions. Oh. Why? You don't Why think the first one would be just misleading? Or that people would think that... I, I'm not in favor of... Um, he wrote this in confidentiality, so... I'll make it for the, just the second one then. Yeah. I'll second that motion. To release the second email. Yes. It, the petitioner was noticed by the SAU that there was an issue with the petition. Right, I, the I do email. know that you responded to the petitioner. I've spoken to the petitioner who is still rather confused as to what has transpired. So I think to be fair to the petitioner, that we should be releasing this so they're aware of what happened. The second email. I, I think they both should be, but right now the motion is for the second legal opinion. I. Well, to Dr. Farris' point, that would make, then it would make sense why she got the, she got the first email. She got the, the email saying that they thought there was an issue. Right. Right? And then, because that's, because everybody kept saying the legislative body has to hold a special meeting. We're not the legislative body. You're the governing body. body. We're not the legislative body. the people body. in the town. So it was like, huh? How do they hold a meeting? They don't. I, I don't understand do why go. something from the SAU went out before the board was aware of what was going on to the petitioner of a Warren article. I really don't think it was Sue's place to respond. I think it was the SAU's place to respond to that email. It was, she addressed the email to us. No. No, no, no. We didn't, we, didn't, we, didn't want to SAU. we didn't want to get it back and forth with the petitioner. Brian and Sue got the um, the information before an email went out to the petitioner. So, and then she was encouraged to contact them because it really we're not and getting into it back and forth. Contacted her and said you're all set. So you sent the original email out to the petitioner. No, I did not. Mm -hmm. I no, I answered her email. You answered her email, but you didn't send the original email out to the petitioner, did you? Saying no. there was an issue with her petition no, I did not. article. No. Her email. She should be getting a response from whoever sent the initial email saying that there was an issue with that petition, the Warren article. She and her question was, what's the what's the issue? What's the consequence or something like okay, that? Okay, so and I wrote back, there's no issue, there's no errors, you're all set. So why did she get an email then? Because of the first email that we received. But she, she needs to have some understanding about what transpired. And only that first opinion would make sense to her, not the second one. The second opinion the is the truthful was the, that was the, is the real That was the reason that we all believed there was a procedural error, right. and then we were told now there's not one. So who knows? Flip a coin? I don't know. But I just rely on the people that read these laws and to advise you correctly. That's all. I, mean, I believe this is confidential and priv privileged correspondence between <clears throat> it was sent to Brian initially. No. Who sent it to me because Brian was covering for me. He sent it to me to share it with me. Brian and I communicated and then right. Brian reached out to the attorney, correct? And then yes. he straightened it out. Yeah. Well. I think we're making, this is just my humble opinion, way more way more of a mountain out of a molehill here. We straightened it out. We're sorry if there was a misunderstanding. We've got it straightened out now. The second email is the email that matters. On that we are, a, we are an SB2 school on system. The, on the motion, I'm, I am in favor of just releasing the second motion. Second email. The, the, yeah. the, second, the second email, because that's the accurate legal advice. Right. And I don't want going into the Last weekend before the vote, I don't want to see conflicting mm -hmm. so people and that's go. That's the problem. That's right. exactly what's happened. I mean, it is. So it's exactly what's happened. And that's not the fair second to the opinion. petitioner. Can we vote? No, I have a question. Do you want to go? You had your hand up. No, I was, gonna, I was ready to call a question. Oh, no. Okay. 
our attorney specifically calls out confidential and privileged. Uh -huh. We are recipients. Mm -hmm. However, do we need his concurrence that we are okay to release this publicly? Confidential and privileged information. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it, it, all parties involved should should be in agreement. I'm not saying I. I'm not trying to hold this up because I think it should be released. But I don't. Courtesy, you as a courtesy, do you want to ask him? He doesn't mean if he says no, you can still do whatever you're going to do anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would like to ask him and just say, hey, Jim, you, you okay if we release this? We as a board, whatever the vote may be. An attorney will never want to have anything ever said publicly because you're, what is the cost benefit? I mean, you get zero benefit Sorry. and all risk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, True. No, I know. I it's know. a no-brainer. No. I know. <laughs> I, it just concerns me that he, he he chose to lead the email with confidential <clears throat> Well, because all of them are. It's a, it's a, they all are. do that on everything, Sean. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. Certainly didn't do it on this first one. We can reach out ASAP because. What do you my, mean? My, my concern, Lee, is that the first with this election. I know. And hours away. It's not I, I share your concern. It's, it's out on Facebook. The wrong opinion. Yeah, <coughs> I don't want exactly. People, I don't want people looking at it's. It's not right. I, I wholeheartedly so that's agree. That's why I want you. the right. We both believe that the public hearing, the deliberative session, was the. Public. Of course it was. Well, that, I mean, of course it was. That people asked me yeah, like at like, huh? Market Basket. I said, you know, we had a hearing. Huh. It was matter, heard. Don't need it. Yeah. February, whatever the so date was. Whatever the February hearing <laughs> was. She explained it, did a nice job, actually. Hmm. Well, I felt it was heard. Could we call the question? Sure, sure. There was a motion on the floor, so. There's a motion on the floor to call the question, right? Oh, you called the question. I, said, I said, said, can I we call the said, question? Sorry. I thought you said. I was just trying to move I along. have a question. Well, so is. <laughs> <laughs> is the motion to just release the second That's one? Yes. The one but David, contacting let's, Attorney Shaughnessy. Let's be clear on which one we're suggesting. We're, the second one is the Wednesday, March 6th at 1049 that's titled Confidential and Privileged. That's yeah. the one we're going to release. Correct. Okay. One, one quick follow-up. correct information. Correct. But I am concerned that he did it confidential and privileged. One, so one, one quick question. Yeah. So as, as an attorney, if you sent a message to a client that said confidential and privileged, is there anything that prevents them from releasing that on their own volition? No. Okay. I, no, because it's the client has paid for that, okay. that document. Fair enough, it's then. there, but it is a professional courtesy to let him know, let him know. that we're putting okay. it out there because he might put something in there that comes mm -hmm. to us that he would not put in there if uh -huh. he thought it was going to be public. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And he may simply say, I would appreciate you redacting that section, and if it's not going to this one right here. affect the I, context I, of it. I think he did, because I think towards the end you... Yeah, you, that's, you so that's why I'm just saying the professional courtesy of him of saying, we're going to oh, release this. Would you like to look through it, and is there anything that won't materially change the content of it that you would like removed? And mm -hmm. just give him that professional I would courtesy. say the second to last paragraph. Yeah. So yeah. that's all I'm saying. It doesn't materially change. It doesn't change the... Uh, yeah. But and he may say, I don't, I don't it care. doesn't matter. Yeah. But I think it's a professional courtesy. Yeah, All right, so we're going to make that caveat is that we're adding to the motion. Somebody that's, gonna, so I can just, so, you, so you're doing the second opinion of Wednesday, March 6th. Right, at 1049. After you, after consulting Pro with professional legal? courtesy. No, that's after? not my motion, and no. I'm not going to change it. It's already okay. been seconded. Okay. So we need an amendment then. I'll make an amendment to uh, consult. Um, Attorney O'Shaughnessy before we formally release it. Regarding the language or? Yes, especially that paragraph. That particular paragraph. Well, before you, somebody seconds so, your amendment, I, I would suggest making an amendment to remove that yes, paragraph. That's what, that's what I mean. Second. Yeah. No, but, no, no, no. It's You're his oh, just, work. Oh, I see. Well, we're going to yeah. remove his work yeah, I, on I, a confidential and privileged. I think it's smart to just talk to him. Yeah, I think so. we'll just release have it. Him release, have him release. Redacted or removed. Yeah, because I would get, I would think that the, I mean that's getting into the authenticity mm. of the document. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right, that's fine. Yeah, I'll, I'll second well, I'll that motion. Se oh. oh, you're going to second okay. it, Lee. That's fine. Lee will second Brian's amendment. So we have an amendment <clears throat> on the floor to consult with a lawyer regarding this email. If he's fine about releasing it, wants to remove anything, we're going to be global in our thinking here. Because we want yes. the information out there correct. 
Yeah. That's, there's yeah. no problem. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's vote on the amendment, please. All those in favor of the amendment? Eight opposed, one abstaining, zero. So now we have an amended motion. Mm -hmm. We clear the motion. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Nine, zero, zero. Okay, we'll take care of that. Um, you want me to speak to Jim? You want Brian and I to speak to Jim? Whichever gets closest. I would quicker. suggest that time is of the essence because we do have to make this available to the public ASAP because it is. Brian and I work out who's yeah. going to try and I'll reach out to him. Shoot him a yeah. quick email. Yeah, yeah it, it's never a quick email. <laughs> it should be very simple. We're going to release this. Is there it okay? Go. Is there, any, is there anything go. that needs to be redacted? Yep. It's a two second email and he should be able to do it over coffee and get it right back so we can get out. Okay, we'll take Brian and I'll take we'll care of that tomorrow happen. morning. Jen. We're moving on. Or can I move on? Yes, we're ready to move on. You ready to move on? I'm ready to move on. Okay, moving on. Jen. Um, in the transportation contract <laughs> that was in our packets, on page four, the very top item, 6.1, carrier shall, carrier being. Hold on, hold on. Oh, we're do this in the Page four. 6.1, carrier, meaning for student, shall be primarily responsible for planning all routes, stops, and schedules. Carrier, sh carrier shall furnish TRSD a complete route map on or before August 15th of each school year. I know I wasn't at the last meeting. There was a lot of talk about this, about coming back, having another discussion about it. The reason I'm bringing this up now is um, to see if we can ask for a student to do some route planning for us before our next, the next time this comes up on the agenda so that we have that to uh, look at. <clears throat> yeah, I requested the transportation contract because I thought this was in the concept. You asked to have this. You look at 6.3. So 6.3 says. So I, I understand that. Reserves the right to establish the routes and mm -hmm. schedules to be followed. They have software that, that can do this. We have one yes. person that does this and it's all done in a manual process. This is. I still don't believe the numbers and that, that. I mean, I'm not saying that they're they're presented in a false fashion. It's just that mathematically, it doesn't it's, make it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time. But when is this on the agenda again next? April fourth. Okay. Um, we put it on April fourth so that everyone could be here. Okay. So I'd like to make the motion that we um, contact the. Who we'll contact? Well, I think you're going to have to direct the superintendent to. April, we say April 4th? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm All right, so I'll make the motion to direct the superintendent to request that first student um, provide us no later than April 3rd uh, route planning based on the recommendation of the board to combine the middle school and high school buses. Isn't that done, though? Wasn't that part of our packet? I think that was right. already done. For a student to do it with the software. Right. Oh, with the software. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Correct. So the roots we saw. You want me to ask them? Because I'm going to tell you there's no way they'll have that done by April 3rd. But because it all has to be put in manually. Okay. Well, we can I, I, And I that's just, what Sandy said know. to us. That yeah. It's a lot <laughs> of manual I'm, putting into the software. Once you've got all the information into the software, this, it'll then grind it out. There's got to be an import mechanism. Yeah, I, I mean, we have the addresses written somewhere electronically. Know, but I'm going to second that motion. I can ask, I, 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 but I can't guarantee Direct you that they can do that by April 3rd. We no get a way. date from them, I mean, at least then it's, we'll adjust it if accordingly. Yeah. I mean, well, you can right. come back to us and tell us what, what, what the puzzle. solution puzzle. is. Yeah. All those in favor? Seven opposed? Two, no abstentions. So it passes. Let's see what you can find out. So let's be clear about the question, because I don't want to say that's not what we asked. So we're asking for a student to just middle school, high school? Just the combined oh. routes. Just the combined routes? Middle school, high school. Yeah, just middle the school, school, high school, high school. Those are the only ones so, that combined. No, I know. No, but Right, they don't have routes. because the just elementary routes never changed. Well, except they get yeah. longer -ish, longer. Um, time got all messed up. On the elementary? Because the buses can't return at the same time to pick yeah. up elementary. But, but, but yeah. the routes for the elementary stayed the same. We didn't explore I think, that. Right. I right. Yeah. So, I think no, the routes so that's are the same. It's just yeah. a matter it's of time to get the buses timing. back. Yep. The but, times get changed, right. but not but the routes. But that's not going to change, no matter what, that's not going to change. You're asking yeah. for new routes. 
the right? roots. For the middle school, high school. Yeah, new roots. Mm -hmm. right? Efficient roots. To try to find some efficiencies with the software in the roots. With the actual right. software. Because we got that software with the last bus contract, right? That was part of the contract that we got this. Yeah, I, I don't know where they are with the software and the implementation. All right. That, so I, okay. I apologize. I don't know a lot about that, but I will ask. We're okay. just asking for new roots. But well, we're asking right, them to fulfill their contractual <clears throat> obligation yeah, to be no. the primary responsible party for planning all the routes. That's a part of their contract. It does not appear that that's what they're doing right now because Mrs. Hodgkins is the one doing it by hand. Before August 15th. Yeah, they if they can pass the buck being the contract person, by all means, sure. let her do it. Let her do it. <laughs> you know, but they're not the obligated thing. to provide it to us until, April, until August 15th. On or before August 15th. So, where's the one from August 15th last year? You know, I, you know, again, however, however it's been done and whatever people's comfort level was in the past, and I'm not saying la whatever. It is what it is. I'll ask them. Okay. But they can say, sure, we'll get it to you by August. That's fine. I, I just this was the first time I saw this contract. I saw that. I, I, you know, I was away for the last meeting. I, I saw part of it. Um, and then when I saw this, and I and I remember hearing her saying that she was manually doing all these routes, and it was a lot of work, and I can appreciate that. Um, she said it was, took her less time to do it manually than it would mm -hmm. to input it into the yeah. in the software. But it, but it looks like the that first student should be doing it, doing some of that, which is well, let's let's question. see. But so. I, I've given this a lot of thought. So and and. and Obje objectively, like looking at this objectively, if I was a brand spanking new superintendent, you just hired me, and you said, go do this, right? I'd be less likely to listen to anybody, and I would just go ahead and do it. I have concerns because of the, what everyone's telling me, that this is going to take 45 minutes to get the buses out of, like, and traffic, and it's not even about the behavior on the bus. I know that that was a big driver in this. It's really now about the logistics of doing this. But that's what I was thinking. Like I was like, I probably wouldn't listen to it. I'd probably just do it, right? So... But I'm a little concerned with what's going to happen. I can't wait until August to get new routes. So I, I hopefully they can turn this quick so we can have some understanding. The middle school and high school people are really worried about this, and not about the behaviors on the bus. They're worried about all those buses lined up and all those cars and trying to get everybody on them and out of here. And, and, uh, and I, I said I don't have any way to practice this and find out how good it could be or how bad it might not be. I would tell you when the new board hired me, they, they asked me to do some stuff that was probably, and some of stuff's easy. Put midterms and finals back, done. You know, explore this. There were certain things like we just couldn't do. I don't know if this is one of those things, like because I'm not sure what the outcome is going to be. I, I'd like to have some protections to say, like, geez, can we try this and see what? We don't really have that. And I wasn't here when they did middle school and high school together, so I don't know how bad it was, and I don't even understand all of the reasons other than oh, we just don't want middle school and high school kids on the same bus, so we separated the buses. I think there was a lot more to it than that, and everybody has their own little piece of this. Um, but this is a start. So if the roots are more efficient, um, we have to look at kind of, and, and you talked, and even today, you know, that we, I think they, there's a, the, when, you know, anytime you make a change, there's a lot of um, unintended consequences, yeah. good and bad, yeah. um, that you don't anticipate, that you don't plan for. Um, do I expect this to be perfect? No. Uh, but I think getting as much information as we can so that we can process this and try and work through this I you know I I'm sorry I wasn't here the last meeting I do still have a lot of information and things that I've sorted through I, I sent Sue an email um, because I'm happy to sit down and meet with um, Ms. Hodgkins and go over that before the next meeting if that will help save any time or I, I don't know but but, I think but, we've got to start somewhere. Yeah, no, we have to start somewhere. <clears throat> and so you know that there'll be some hiccups irregardless, right? Mm -hmm. So this is no different than block scheduling, right? You got, if you're going to do it, we're going to do it. So we have to do – it's just I'd like to control as many variables as possible mm -hmm. and make it work. I understand. Right? I don't want it to not work. So um, I'm sure it can work. It's just a matter of what I mean. Even like today, the stuff that you brought up, I know there's some changes as early as tomorrow with some of the drop-off pickup based on some of the information you gave me today. Was yeah, that I'll talk to you about that after because I think so, there was some – I don't think – I'm not sure you – yeah. Okay, we can talk. But I, I think, um, <laughs> sorry, Sheila, the, the, um, getting the efficient routes and then trying to implement this, I, we, need the, we need the routes sooner than later. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm just thinking out loud now. Is there any way to practice this this year before we open school? 
And I that's one of my questions. Think about that and get back to us on the fourth. <laughs> I know, I'd like, because I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to know, right? Um, Be worth a try. Mm -hmm. anyway, yeah, so let's try the roots as Sandy showed them the other day and and prove that 20, 20 roots will roots will be all messed up and eight roots will be better and <laughs> one root will be exactly the same. And the consequence so on the, the on elementary, the elementary end that nobody even addressed. Yeah. Boom. Fun. With how many kids would be picked up late, picked up, dropped off late rather, and buses well, not getting back to the yards. But there's not going to be any "I told you so" or any. That. It's like if we do this, we have to do it, right? I mean, we have to do it right, and we have to make it work, right? So there's not going to be any malicious compliance. Oh, look at how bad this is! If we do this, we need to make sure we do this right. So I want, we got to flush out all these variables. That's right. These other yeah. variables. That's mm -hmm. right. Sheila. I'm trying to change the subject. I got two questions. <laughs> and I haven't seen <coughs> Dr. Metzler in a while. Um, remind me, did you say that Georgie Boy confirmed both years for the no bullying? Or did you hope for next year it confirmed this year? It confirmed both they, years. They got it in both years. I think. Do you remember? It's I'm, I'm, both years. I'm feeling like it was confirmed for both years. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's what I'm feeling like, too. Susan Rassico, when they yeah. presented, said we right. At first they weren't sure, but then it I was. think that they Well, I know she put it in her... Mm -hmm. Just budget just in case. Yeah, so that's why would, I'm asking if you would offset after. the budget. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. The second thing um, I would really like is after hearing um, a one person come up and speak, is there any way that we can get the um, breakout for what the um, attorney's bills was for this month? Sure. This Sent month, to us? March? Well, the, March? the bill we just got for $30,000. That was January. I think it was a February 19th yeah, date on it. Block. The block. I would I would recommend that we look at the last Sarah two months Cesar's. of invoices that we physically have here. Mm -hmm. Broken Please. up, Some Broken up can, by you case can, number. We, those are always you can see those. We, the, see, when we, we send them out, they have to be redacted. Yes. Correct. 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 But you can see them. Yep. But I'm just asking, I just They're am very curious <laughs> to... I, mean, I want to be clear about that, that the legal bills, the we can see, mm -hmm. but if you walk out of here with them, mm -hmm. they have the student information on there that would need so to be redacted. So all I'm looking for so is, if we get a copy of them. this case cost us this much. Oh, we don't, oh, we don't, this, we don't have a break It's not analyzed that way. We can have it analyzed that way. It would take a little time. Yeah. And I, I wasn't here for the, oh, let's make sure. I, I can tell you when the invoices come in, mm -hmm. yeah. they are analyzed. Yeah. You have to sign off on... What and they are billed to the correct entity. There's yeah. no okay. not. No, no, no. I'm not the, even asking yeah. that. I'm okay. just curious to what. This is, right. I mean, you know, what we had us this, what that, yeah. that docket number. Yeah, you, we've can, had you can assign them to certain. We've had deliberative. Yeah. yeah so the bills I'm, don't I'm, come in. The bills mm -hmm. don't come in with just a single topic, and those are all the Big those chunks. are all the charges associated okay. with that topic. Okay. They come in monthly based on. Every, the only thing that's broken out on a separate one is special education. Okay. Mm -hmm. But all, all right. of the bills that come through are all... Like I said, and anybody that's we've had, had public months. hearing, we've had to lib, mm -hmm. you know, that we've needed. Mm -hmm. I, sure. I'm just curious mm -hmm. how much of that... Yeah, you'll see which ones, you can kind of get an idea what's operational, what you need for negotiating contracts and running meetings, Correct. and then Correct. what are some of the other things. Phone I think calls, anybody that's emails. made a phone call right. to the mm -hmm. attorneys on behalf of the board, right. you know Kathy has to call you to say, did you speak to attorney yeah. so-and-so, mm -hmm. yeah. and then she initials it. But I, I just think that's a, it's a good chunk of money, and I'm just kind of curious yes. what no, it, it mm -hmm. what it's going towards. So why don't we start with the actual document that we get that comes in Kathy after you guys have signed off that what Sarah signed yeah, off I see. so that the board can see that entire document and then understand that if you were going to then take that big document and put it pass it all out to that would be a lawsuits, job for someone who has a lot um, of time the primary <laughs> do that. I'm not kidding but the, the, I have time I, the, the law I, office <coughs> accounts for does not no, no okay. we're please client. start with yeah. if you would let us start with showing you what the bills look like yeah. Yeah. Brian's seen and them the bills I'm sorry Sarah's seen them I've seen them I, I'm not sure Kim has seen them that way but you've got to see the bill so you'd understand what we're referring to I'm just asking and the then, question if it could be and the bills are far more detailed now than they ever were because I've been right. th since I started. I said I asked them to put, and they said, "Do you want all that detail?" And I said, "Well, yeah, we need detail because we need to know what we're paying for and why." Because they used to just come in, honest hours, and yeah. that's what a final invoice looks like. But on the attorney oh. side, the law office, 
they account for it just like a, a project, <laughs> especially when it's related to an active look suit. At it. I know even from our town it was a little confusing. I think all, of, all I was looking for is what right. Jeff Thank used, you. what Thank Jeff you. gave us. Remember, Jeff gave us that list one time. It was like special education was this, you know. You're not Public gonna, hearing I, I know exactly what you're looking for. Do you, do you get what I'm see. saying? That's all I was looking it. for. I, I know exactly what you're looking for. It, it, they don't have it. Yeah. It doesn't have to be You'll have to difficult. Mm -hmm. for me. It doesn't. It's, it is very difficult. Well, it's not. You're better off to get the bills and go through it yourself. Okay. And if you're it, looking for something specific, okay. it's, it's. Forget I even asked. No, no, it's not. No, 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 no. No, no, We're going to show you what we'll pick out. You can add up. Just take a calculator and add up the numbers, what you think, where they. I mean, you get a good idea. You get a rough estimate. It just, like I said, it was a little shocking, and I'm. Curious now. The other lawyers. Let me take a but I don't think can one of them is going to give you a. On that request? Like, no. how far back are we going? Like, we just how's see. It? How about we just see the month of January through February? Because it's a, it's interesting how they bill us. It's don't. Uh, don't have February February, here probably. February because yeah. just look at this last billing. check register that we just signed that had a okay. huge bill. I'm gonna yeah, just that one. But, but yes. I have a suggestion here. That one. I have a suggestion here because I'm pretty I'm pretty confident I know what Shields looking for. We get in touch with Oshana tomorrow, but that what you're looking for is what kind of money have we spent on a certain case? That's what right. you're looking but for. That's what I'm looking. And for. he'll be able to go through that and give us a pretty good idea because it that answer is not in this building. Okay. It's part of his. It, 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 he, his bill won't break it up. Like billion for it. For it. <laughs> Let him bill us for that, <laughs> because I, I and <laughs> Sheila want the district to know yeah. what's going on here. So what certain people can cost their district. So um, taxpayers' money. There you it's, go. So I, I know what you're looking for, and we'll we'll get it. Okay. It just seems like a really big number, and <laughs> you ain't saying anything yet. Yeah. Ain't over. Okay. Let's start with that. So, so we'll see it, and then have a discussion about. Starting with like December, January. How about dance December, January? Okay. Yes, right. please. Just show us one. Get yes. it started. Yeah, it's. I didn't mean to make Those it difficult. I just have. wanted to Everything. see what. It's not as right. Yeah, How it's not as like easy as I thought. To the board, Madam Chair. I'd like the in a folder yeah. that yeah. can go that on is. the table next time. Yes, but not yeah. leave the room. That doesn't leave the room. Is that good? Or okay. you can come in as a read, read, read only. You can I mean, come in and read, read only. only. No. Or we can do it here. Well, read only. Do it. It's not going to be sent to you electronically. Do it here. Some of us work do during the day and here. can't get here between 8 and 4.30. Okay. 8.30 and 4.30. 8.30 and 4.00. We'll have it here at the next board meeting. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Moving on. Sean. To get back to the transportation, one of the things that I think is very key in having the first student do this via, the, yes, it's a pain to get the data entry, and I do agree with Lee, there should be an import mechanism to, to, to expedite that. But what this is going to do is it's not only going to find just one solution that Sandy started out with using the middle school as the foundation and then figuring it out from there. It's, so, it's going to take all these data points, and it's a big math problem. It's going to try you know, all different kinds of permutations to find out the best. You're sprinkling 29 buses across the entire district to optimize this. Then you're also, as a caveat, you can add in there, you know what, a bus that's coming down to the middle school, I mean, the one bus, it doesn't have to stay in one particular town. If it swings along a, a boundary between, you know, Sandown and Danville, it can pick up people in both of that. You're, you're, that's why it's key to put this into a, a program and let that, they optimize this, it's their business. I think the, the yeah. one piece though, and I, you, you caught on this before, it's about ridership, right? So I don't think the software is going to be able to identify ridership. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna put routes for every kid on every street, right? That would take, they would, assuming everybody's taking the bus. I think Sandy adjusts for, cause, for ridership, I mm -hmm. think. Right. Sure. They, that should but all be an input metric. I mean, it's, there's going to be stuff in there like what's the time well, per, per well, I mean, bus stop per per student. I mean, if you got to uh, pick up one kid, this is turned into an agenda item. This is nuts. This is nuts. We're another business. Later. I just want to simply say because I've had my arm up trying to. Following on what you're saying, I agree 100 percent with what you are. But also, if you read the contract, it says that there's they like me less than a month to do this. So if we get them the information and you contact them, it says their turnaround, they, we have to give them all the names and addresses by July 15th, and they'll have the routes to us by August 15th. So we should be able to get this in that ballpark of our, our, our April 4th. We're off season. They're not doing every district, so 
you know, oh, maybe there's like a... to promise something that I can't. Oh, no, I, 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 I realize you can't. We're not asking you to make that promise, but to make the contact. But I think one month is a reasonable time period based on what their contract says here. Yeah. Generally asking for July 15th and producing by August 15th. So yeah, they might be able to do it in a day. I don't know. Right. Exactly. Sarah. Six one and six. Two. Um, this has nothing to do with buses. <laughs> moving, away buses. moving away from buses since the election is next week and we'll be having our reorganization meeting um, and we're probably going to be going into non-public and we might not come back out. I just wanted to take a moment and thank you, Madam Chair, for your tenure as chair this year and all the hard work that you have put in and all the extra hours that you've put in over the course of this year. just wanted to kind of take that moment and thank you for everything you've done for the board and for the district this year. Very nice. Okay, let's move on if we can. It's not about transportation. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Um, the email uh, that we got about staffing i'm just curious that because we do have a lot of positions posted are any of those posted positions no longer going to be posted because we're not well here's the thing so um i don't have any intention of bringing a you know i think we're we're giving this some time to root and i, was, mm -hmm. I still have some concerns especially i do but we're um they're posted and we're, we're gathering resumes so, so part of those resumes could be for positions that are going to be vacated via people leaving on their own or retirements, mm -hmm. right? So it doesn't hurt to have people applying, but we, I guess what I was telling you, I, I'm, I don't have any intention of bringing any new hires to you based on those postings. Okay. Right, so they're posting. I mean, I can pull them down. We have people, whoever has applied has applied. Mm -hmm. um, we'll probably be posting some more positions now as, as we look at the retirements and those. They asked about the retirements. You know, when I said you should post those. So we have some things that are posted based on right. retirement right. openings. I, um, I recognize some of them as re as retirement, but there's there were quite a few in there. I didn't know if any of these were going to, are not. Also, over the next here's here's how, the, the real answer. The, the, over the next couple of weeks, uh, that's when I meet with the principals and we spend we go through their staffing. Mm -hmm. and that, that other information that I indicated in that email, I'm pretty excited about the fact that we don't have any of what I exp expressed in that mm -hmm. that email because that that means we're we're getting to a good place where everyone's comfortable with with the staffs that they have. So. Um, I'll know more for sure by the 21st. Any other business? Yeah. Oh. I'm in, I'm still other businessing. 10, 12. Kim, other business. This is related to what Jen just spoke about and the fact that the budget is, the vote will be next week. The default budget may or may not pass. The proposed budget may or may not pass. There may have to be some changes in staffing. I do not want to see a repeat of what we saw last year, where there were however many pink slips that were put out before the school board was aware of it. I don't know if, and I'm asking you, Sue, if we need to make a motion to make sure that the board is informed before there's a, mass hysteria. a before we find out publicly that we have massive layoffs of our staff. Great the board's prerogative to make a motion. I do want to make a correction, though, on what you said, Kim. I don't often correct you. But but the default doesn't pass or not pass. No, it's right. the proposed budget right. that if passes propose, right. or not passes. That's correct. You're right. Yeah. And you would have been aware of potential layoffs when you reject the renominations, right? That's how that works. Uh, okay, I'd like to make a motion, then, that if there are going to be... Um, if there's going to be any reduction in staff, that this board call a special meeting to um, go over that before, first. Well, before any action. I don't think that's how you want to word the motion. Well, how do I want to word it? Why don't you go ahead and make the motion? No, you make the motion, but I, I think that we have to direct the superintendent to let the board know so that, that we can call a special meeting. That, that and it be addressed before it goes public. Correct. It's premature like because you'd get a renomination list first. That's why that this whole motion thing and the paranoia of this is premature. What, if, what, what happened, happened last year? I, 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 you I, rejected the renomination list, which, which we got right. cut, we got yeah. pushed up against a deadline, yeah. which meant that if we didn't right. let people know in advance that they might not have a position, and you continued to reject the renomination list, we wouldn't be able to hire them. We protected the district, is what we did. But the reason we rejected the renomination list. 
Uh, we didn't and agree just with rejected it. We just it wasn't rejected reason. it. We had to keep finding dates. We couldn't afford that was the all Saturday. the teachers on the list. <clears throat> anyway, make your motion or make not your make your motion. Why? Well, I'll make to, a motion. I, I, I mean, it's, go ahead because I can't remember what the timeline was of it last year. I'm trying I to think. think it's of. April fifteenth that we have to right. but we ran do the renominations. Just be notified. We have, have to notify order. staff that they're not coming back by April fifteenth, or they're automatically back. Correct. So that was the problem. You rejected the renomination list. I renominated all the teachers. You said no. I, we're not. We're not ready to do that yet. We want to look at it some more. Yep. And then we got pushed up against the deadline. I had to blanket a certain number to protect us because we wouldn't. In the event that we didn't have the money to pay them, we would have been, we would have had to pay them. They were all brought back. Is it safe to say that you would have your your list of renominations the meeting after town? Well, I don't know if I'll have it on the twenty first. I'll try to have it on the twenty first. I have to meet with the principals to go through the list. Probably the fourth. But, the, but then I get, if I bring it to the fourth and you say no, now we're into the seventeenth. No, that's so, what happened last. So time. I got to try to get it to you on the twenty first if you have issues with the list, right? So I think that that's. If I can get you the renomination list on the 21st, it gives us some time. You can do that both, you can do that both the 21st. 21st. So you can do my, that. My, my motion will be is to have by March 20, or March 21st school board meeting a list of renominations for the... For no, the I wouldn't do that. It's kind of early. I wouldn't do that, Tron. I guess what I'm, I'm suggesting no, is... Next week I'm suggesting the, next the concern... You can put that concern off until after this. Yeah. You can bring out the concern up at the at the next meeting. At, at the, the next March meeting. That's what I'm saying. Meeting. I think from a practical standpoint, though, and Brian's right, but from a practical standpoint, bringing you the renominations on April 4th is a bad idea. Correct. Because it doesn't give you a, a lot of time. Right. right. So that was kind of like a surprise to everybody. Like, all right, we're not accepting the renominations. No, no knock on anybody. I'm not. It just that's what happened, and then we were stuck on the deadline. So if I can get you the renomination list on the 21st, if you have issues, it gives us another meeting on April 4th. And we're not stuck on that April fifteenth deadline. Make sense? Right. So if you're comfortable with the renominations and it fits and it fits in the budget and we can afford everything, then it's kind of the points moot. Mm -hmm. But if there are issues, we have another meeting to fix to do something before April April fourth, which would give us a, a, another meeting. And then you have a good eleven days before, if you needed a special meeting, you'd have more time. So I think we're in good shape. Bottom line, you'll have the result of the vote too. Well, we'll know the so we'll know, know, you'll the, know the results. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Brian. But I also think we're in good shape meeting. in terms of what we have for current staffing levels based on the, what I'm telling you. I think we're, and I just have to meet with the principals to make sure. All right. And then I'll know so what it costs. So if the goal is that we're going to, that the, the board is going to see that in March versus April. Yeah, we're going to roll it back two weeks and that, that's, that protects well, everybody. That, that's protects what you, protects me, protects the district. Want. Good. Protects so, the teachers. We'll shoot okay. So do we need a motion right. or is this going to happen? It, this yeah. is going to happen. This is going to happen. It's a consensus of the board. It's going to be there. You're agreeing. I, to it. I, just, I said we are going to get them to the 21st. I have those meetings all scheduled. I just have to get okay. that list no, together. That's, that's fine. Yep. So are we consensus? Are we making us a motion? I don't, I don't know. Can we, we do it by consensus, or do we need a motion? I wouldn't do the motion. I th consensus. What? I would do it as consensus. I would do the motion. I think. Yeah, I think. Wait till the next meeting. I think. I think we're one meeting too early myself. No, it's a consensus. If, if I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. If I wasn't going to do it, I tell you I wasn't doing it. I told you I'm going to bring you the list on the 21st. That's my that's, that's my charge now yeah. over the next two weeks. Okay. All right. Okay. Can we okay with it then? Any other other business? No. I understand we have some people who want to. Oh, Earl has a non-public. Is there any? Yes, yeah, some other non-publics. So we'll start and then we'll we're not going to come back, are we, into public? All right. So. Uh, Good night, everyone. We're going to go. Oh, let's go into non public first before we turn the cameras off. Sorry, Jean. A motion and a second and a reason. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no problem with that. Earl, do you want to go into non public? I do. Under? Um, under reputation. See? So See. I'll make the motion uh, to go into non public 91A3, paragraph 2C, matters which, if discussed in public, would likely adverse. It affect adversely the reputation of any person other than a member. Second. Second from Lee. Lee. Mm -hmm. Mr. Boyle? Yes. Mr. Duby? Yes. Dr. Farah? Yes. Mrs. Lowe's? Yep. Mrs. Nakama? Yes. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Mrs. Savage? Yes. I sent that email out. Okay. Okay. Yes. Mrs. Silva? Yes. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night. We won't be coming back. Make sure.